Fans still filing in to Faroe Field in Columbia. Live look right there. 70,000 here tonight we're expecting, at least close to it, as the Tigers open up the home portion of the 2009 schedule. Both teams are 1-0. This should be a lot of fun here tonight. And really payback in many ways for Gary Pinkle as he lost earlier to Bowling Green early in his tenure here at Mizzou. The temperature, 79 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, and you see the forecast is fair, but it is gorgeous right now. Downstairs we go, third member of our crew, and Todd Donahoe is standing by. Todd. Dan, you know, there's a pretty good little history between Bowling Green and Missouri. The schools have met four times on the football field. Bowling Green has won three of those times, and as you mentioned, in Gary Pinkle's debut game as head coach of the University of Missouri, back on September 1st of 2001, Missouri lost to Bowling Green. They lost 20 to 13. Now the head coach for Bowling Green that day and making his head coaching debut was Urban Meyer, who of course went to Utah and then on to Florida. Now Bowling Green beat Missouri the next year in 2002 as well. Gary Finkel said, I got to do something to jolt my players, jolt my team, jolt my program and fan base. So he decided to nickname Faroe Field the Zoo, Z-O-U. Tigers play in the Zoo. And ever since that time, Missouri has a home field advantage here at the Zoo. 30 and 7, that's their record here. They've won 18 of their last 20 games. So Florida has the Swamp, Ohio State has the Big Horseshoe, Missouri has the Zoo. And by the way, who was that quarterback that led Missouri to the only victory over Bowling Green? Well, Dan McLaughlin, he's sitting right next to you. It's Corby Jones. Corby Jones is with us here tonight. There's a look at Gary Pinkle. And the Tigers in home openers under Pinkle are 6-2. and two. He's in his ninth season and really has turned things around. He definitely has. And Todd, made a, Todd made a great point the last time we beat Bowling Green, but I see that we don't have any footage of any of that. That was so long ago. I don't, I don't think they kept tape that long. That was Darius Outlaw. That's, oh, that's what we saw. Yeah, I'm saying the last time we I beat know. Him. Darius Outlaw, that was, I, I helped recruit that kid. He was, <laughs> he was still here when I was here, though. I mean, I still remember some of these guys. <laughs> you don't go back that far. You're still a young man. <laughs> Not so much. Corby Jones with us. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Todd Donahoe. There's a look at Dave Clawson. First year at Bowling Green. And away we go. Sea of gold here tonight. Close to 70,000 at the zoo. Faroe Field in Columbia. Bowling Green will kick it off. It'll come and be fielded at the one-yard line. And away we go. To the outside and knocked out of bounds at that 27 for Mizzou and they'll have it first and 10. And what was it like your first time stepping onto the field at home knowing that you were the guy, you were the quarterback? Oh, he's got to have, Blaine's got to have some jitter, jitters right now. I don't care what he did in week one. I, I remember I felt the adrenaline pump in my first pass. I look for right here, Coach, Coach uh, Yost, to come out and give him something short, give him something easy to complete, and get, a, get, his ball roll, get the ball rolling a little bit and get him a little momentum. Four wide receivers to the left side for Blaine Gabbard. He'll work out of the shotgun on the 20, and he'll land it off. Up the middle, close to a first down. They do pick up the first down for that Missouri offense, and that's Derek Washington. He's a junior and really trying to have a bounce-back game. He wasn't much of a factor against Illinois. He still had a, he still had one long run, one long carry, a 32-yard uh, run last week, but that's what they're going to try to do. They're going to see the holes in this defense and, and try to exploit them. Elvis Fisher, his 16th start up front, the left tackle, and there you see Derek Washington and a group that is highly talented. Plenty of protection, a pickup at the 45 for the Tigers as the catch was made for that Missouri offense, and that's Jared Perry, the senior, and an outstanding player and really one of the go-to guys. You notice how quickly they're moving right now. They see they want to keep Bowling Green in the same personnel so they can't switch out. They can confuse Bowling Green just as much as the defense can confuse an offense. So Bowling Green trying to stop Missouri and their wonderful offense that we saw just a week ago. They'll put Washington in motion. High snap. He'll get it. And Washington gets the handoff, and we'll have a third and about three coming up. Flag on the play. You see Sanderson in on the stop, and now we've got a flag on the play. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, unnecessary roughness, number 66 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. Austin Rebels, 6'4", 305, a sophomore in the left guard for the Missouri Tigers. 
this really is a young group, and you think about if they can put things together this year, just how good they might be their junior and senior years. Oh, definitely. They've got Austin Webbles is, is a first-time starter. The guy behind him, Jason Palmgren, lettered last year. So he got. You'll see some plant. You'll see him in uh, in the in the uh, offense from time to time. But uh, they are they are relatively young. Other than other than him, I mean, they're clearly there's only one senior, Curtis Gregory, on the offensive line, and everybody else is juniors and sophomores. So they're they're young and they're going to be tough in years to come. So it sets up a long third down. This would be 18. Check that second down and 18 for the Missouri Tigers and Gabbard. Works out of the shotgun. Little play action. Good time again. Steps up. Looking deep. Airs it out. It's really a jump ball and no flag on the play. No flag on the play. You can hear the boos. It's Wes Kemp, who is one of their young wide receivers out of the Smet High School in St. Louis. Tremendous protection that time for Blaine Gabbert. Had time to sit back and see the field and, and just and just air it out. I, I think the ball slipped out of his hand a little bit, had a little wiggle to it. Uh, you, you won't see a lot of that out of him. And now they have changed it and said fourth down. It's fourth down. I think we missed that. It was the, the penalty was after the, the personal foul was after the play, so, we lo so they lost the down on that also. So Willie Jeter, who is their speedster, standing back on the 30-yard line, and here in the Jumbotron, they had third down. There's a little confusion on both sides, and Jeter is tackled inside the 25, and very nice coverage that time by Missouri, and there's Mr. Spoon. That guy has a motor, fellas. I mean, you know, this guy can really play football. The coach, Coach Steckel says that this guy is their Ray Lewis. He's got a motor that won't quit. He's always happy-go-lucky. He said, scouts come in this place and look at this guy and say, what's wrong with him? And Coach Steckel said, that's just, that's just the way he is. He's so high energy. He's a tremendous football player and tremendous leader. There's the numbers in his career. Tyler Sheehan, as we talked about in our open with Corby, plenty of experience. His third year as a starter in this program, but dealing with a new head coach. They'll work from the shotgun, and before... The play gets away. There is a flag, and it looks like that will go against the Falcons. First snap, false start. Number 64 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. So the offense and the infraction there, that's Scott Albert. He's a senior, and that shouldn't happen. He's a big kid, 6'7", 300 pounds. And in talking with their coaching staff this week, they really like him. He wears number 64. So first and 15 for the Falcons. As Faro Field is still getting packed. And a completion underneath and a short pick up there for the Falcons. And let's meet the offense here of Bowling Green. Who really stands out up front for you with this offensive line? Offensive line, those two tackles, the, the, the biggest guys on the field for them, Tyler Donahue and uh, Brady Minturn. Those guys are great football players. They keep people in front of them, but they're going to have some trouble with the speed rush of Missouri today. You just saw the catch by Freddie Barnes. Cheater, the junior tailback. They'll put him in motion. All by him lonesome now. And over the middle, the catch made, and that's a first down for Bowling Green. How much do you think it's in the back of Gary Pinkle's mind, the fact that he has lost to Bowling Green, as we'll take a look at this defense of the Missouri Tigers. And not only with that, but also, you know, thinking about this offense that really likes to put the ball up in the air, it's going to test his uh, defense here tonight. Definitely. Last week they thought they'd be tested, but tonight they're going to be tested even, even further. So she in this time under center. And it's first and ten. They'll hand it off. It's Jeter, right side. Has a little bit of a hole and a pickup of maybe four on the play. And Weatherspoon was in there again. The secondary is what Gary Pinkle was talking about. There's a look at Spoon, the All-American candidate. But the secondary really could be tested this evening. Without a doubt. You see Bowling Green will line up three wides, uh, four wides, and sometimes five wides go to the empty backfield. They'll motion Jeter out like they did two, two plays ago. These guys are going to throw the ball. Sheehan looks over to his sideline from the shotgun again. Little shovel pass, dangerous that time, and a short pickup. It'll be third and four. The Tigers sniff that out. And Brian Coulter was in on the stop. And 
This crowd will now come alive on third down and four for the Falcons. Sheehan, little hesitation and a drop. It would have been a first down. And that's the guy that they're going to go to. Whenever they want to throw the ball, whenever they need a big play, they're going to go to number seven, Freddie Barnes. But just like last week, and I said in the open, Tyler Sheehan had some balls dropped last week. That kid's their best receiver, caught 157 yards worth of, worth of uh, passes last week. And this week, but he had three drops. This week, he starts off the same way. He's a little shaky to start off the game, but look for them to go right back to him. And as you well know, you have a receiver that has drops from the week before still on the back of his mind. Without a doubt, but we, we talked to their coaches all this week, and they said they're going to keep going back to him. And this is a fair catch called for by Geddes. And the Tigers will have their second possession upcoming with 11.04 to go. We're just underway. Fox Sports Midwest pay-per-view tonight. Glad that you're with us from Perot Field in Columbia. You can see the shots there. It's a sea of gold and a huge, huge crowd here this evening. Well, Blaine Gabbert, who will lead this offense, led the offense to scores on seven of nine drives against Illinois last weekend. And Gabbert was 25 of 33, 319 yards, three uh, passing touchdowns and Gary Pinkle was telling us the other day that he was so excited to see what he would do coming back here in game number two and what he would do. Well Gary Pinkle has dealt with quarterbacks before as far as young kids and what does he think about leading a guy like Blaine Gabbert and some of those young QBs? As I tell any quarterback that starts for me especially when they're young is that anything that uh, my opinion is the only what really matters. Nobody else. Obviously, Dave Yost, our quarterback coach. But it doesn't matter to any fans, media, family. Nobody matters. Just this mine. And, and your job is to win football games. That's it. It's not to look pretty. It's not to, you know, it's not to, uh, uh, you know, walk around saying you threw for 350 yards. That we don't. Doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's about winning football games. And the QB rating was 186.96, the highest of any Big 12 quarterback in Week One. So. You couldn't ask him to have a better debut. Oh, you you definitely couldn't. He's he's a tremendous player and he's got to be great. But it's it's tough. You got to get him settled in here. Get a couple short passes. Get his legs underneath him and get it and try to get a feel for what Bowling Green's doing up front to him. So there you see it. Seven of nine possessions, four touchdowns, three field goals, and two punts. And it wasn't like he was doing it out of state. I mean, that's his hometown. He grew up about 15 minutes from the Dome. So you know family and friends were there, too. That's great to see how he performs under pressure, because whether or not anyone else put pressure on him, Illinois was a favorite in that game. He was putting pressure on, his, on himself, knowing that he had so many people in the stands watching him and expecting so much out of him. And we know he has the big arm, but what really stood out for a lot of people, how well he ran the football. People don't realize he's a legitimate 4-5 guy. I mean, he's faster than Chase Daniel. Just because he's bigger doesn't mean he can't run. And Gabbard wants to throw the football. They'll dump it underneath, and they'll lose yardage on the play. And Missouri loves that. was made by Perry. Missouri loves that little slip screen uh, to uh, Jared Perry. Uh, he, can, he can make plays. He'll slip underneath. Kevin Alvarado, the sophomore up front. He's a good one. James Schneider, the linebacker on the outside. And also Sanderson on the other side. And watch out for Roger Williams, a senior in that backfield, defensive backfield for Bowling Green. They'll run the football here. Not much of a gain, and it brings up a long third down for Missouri. It's Derek Washington with the carry. So third down and eight with just over 10 minutes to play here in our first quarter. Four wide receivers to the top of the screen. Gabbert pressured out of the pocket, and he'll throw it out of uh, arm's way, and the Tigers will have to punt it away, and this crowd is a little bit quiet right now because of this start. That's just a, that's just a blown assignment by, by uh, Elvis Fisher on that play. He's, he's got to step up. He's got to punch. They ran a little twist, and they, got, they just got through. And look at that. A wide open receiver, but running yeah. flush from the pocket. Running jailbreak. You just can't see him. Yeah. So Jake Harry will have to punt it away. Three punts. Average nearly 50 yards against Illinois last weekend. His longest was 60, and he had two inside the 20 a weekend ago. And he will 
Let this one rip to about that 38-yard uh, line. Takes a Missouri bounce, and that will roll inside the 25 and be down at the 23-yard line. The Falcons will have it with their second possession of the ball game tonight. A little shaky start offensively for Missouri. A little bit, a little bit, but I, I don't expect anything. I don't expect them to slip at all. They'll come back out. I just hope that the defense continues to hold because we had some... Tyler Sheehan did a great job of finding wide open receivers on the last drive. Just had a drop that, that stalled the drive. But the Missouri came with a couple of zone blitzes and left some holes. Tyler Sheehan, a quarterback from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's in the backfield along with his top running back, Willie Jeter. Good play action. And he is looking deep down the sideline and overthrows the intended receiver. You can see on that sideline, they want the flag, but uh, no flag on that play. And a lineman up front is hurt for Bowling Green. That's one thing about Sheehan, though. When he rolls, he he wants to roll right. Every single time he's going to, every time he takes that snap and takes that little dash, he wants to roll right. And, he, and once again, he's looking for Freddie Barnes, looking for his go-to guy. Full contact, but no call. Well, Geddes was almost beat on that play. A little bit. Second down and 10. Golden Green not shy one bit about putting the ball in the air. We thought they were going to do that. The short pick up on that play across the 25 to the 27 yard line brings up a third and about five for the Falcons, who won over Troy last week as they fell behind early on and then came back to win that ball game. Look at him, look at him swarm to the ball. And who's the first guy there? Number 12, Weatherspoon. That guy's all over the field. Third down and five. <laughs> Left side incomplete. And the Falcons will have to punt it away. Great pressure off the edge that time from Brian Coulter, number two. Did a tremendous job of beating his man and getting, and getting in Tyler Sheehan's face. They're going to have to do that all day. Chris Wright was the intended receiver, and they'll kick it away. And the Tigers will have their third possession. Geddes deep for Missouri, standing on his own 30. The kick is away. It's short. Another fair catch. Handled at the 35. At the 35. 8.45 to go in our first quarter of play. Missouri and Bowling Green, no score. That means a, a new coordinator for the Missouri Tigers offensively and defensively. David Yost, as you see a score this game, 8.45 to go first quarter for Gary Pinkle. But David Yost, first year, and there he is as the offensive coordinator. Also coaches the quarterbacks and the recruiting coordinator for the Missouri Tigers. But uh, he's been in this program a number of years. He has. He, he, he dates back to Toledo with, with Coach Pinkle and his staff. Um, Coach, Pinkle, Coach Pinkle believes in in promoting from within. And if, if he feels like a guy's ready to, to step up, he's not going to go out and look for somebody that when he has a vacancy, he's going to he's going to hire the guys that he's already got and that, and that can, can continue to perpetuate what they're doing. We were talking before the game. Gary Pinkle's a changed man, isn't he? Very much so. You know, he said it in his in his press conference. He said, he said, you know, since the death of Aaron O'Neill, it's I mean, it's really changed him. It's really, really humbled him and, and taught him to be a taught him to be like a, 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 a much nicer coach. <laughs> As you see that smiling. There's a handoff and across the 30 brought down at the 40 yard line. That's not Derek Washington as they'll mix things up. That's Mr. Lawrence and we should mention that Devin Moore is not playing tonight. Yeah. Kendall Lawrence is a, is a speedy young back, true freshman, and they, they're really excited about this kid. He can, he can really get out and fly. Kendall Lawrence, 5'9", 185 pounds. Here's Gabbard, has to tuck it. And that could be a flag on that play. And late flag, and finally it comes out, and the fans appreciate that. Dave Clawson does not. Now, Dave Clawson, the head coach, has 20 years of coaching experience. Nine as a head coach at Fordham and Richmond. Personal foul, late here the quarterback. 
You know, there's a, there's a huge emphasis on protecting the QB this year, and that's just unacceptable. You, you, you can't take, you cannot take a cheap shot on the QB when he stepped out of bounds like that. It's Brandon Jackson, and he's a senior, so the infractions so far for the Falcons have been by a couple of seniors. Guys you normally wouldn't think that would happen with. Inexcusable. And now before the snap, it's first and ten, and the Tigers have it in Falcons territory. And they will mark this off properly, and now they do. And it'll be first and ten at the 43. There's a look at Jackson. We just had that late hit. Gabbard from the shotgun. Keeps it himself. And they string the play out. It's a pickup of maybe three on the play. That's that zone read. Blaine Gabbard's looking to looking at the end man on line of scrimmage right there to ask him whether to give the ball or to keep it. And uh, that time he chose to keep it. And it worked out well for him. He, he can get the corner that you see the end crash. Once the end crashes, he can get the sideline, and that's that's what he's going to do every single time. There's Roger Williams, a senior in on the stop, one of their cornerbacks. And now Gabbard changing the play. Five wide receivers for the Tigers. Gabbard all alone in the backfield. Plenty of time rolling to his right, looking for anybody. He'll have to tuck it again. Now throws and incomplete. The Missouri offensive line did a great job protecting there, but you got to think for Blaine Gabbard to get forced out of the pocket when only two guys are rushing, that's, that's got to be cause for concern. And also give uh, Bowling Green their secondary. A little uh, credit here as well with the, the good protection that Gabbard had. So everybody kind of drops back, and Blaine Gabbard didn't, was a little bit indecisive as to where the, where, where the ball should go at that point. That was Alexander in and out of his hands. Even if he catches it, it would have been incomplete. Gabbard will throw. Swings it to the left side, and they'll lose yardage on this play. And in on the stop, Eugene Fells, their outside linebacker, a redshirt junior. Everybody was covered there. It's a great job by the Bowling Green defense by making making Blaine Gabbard go with his last option, go with his check down. He goes out, he goes out there, and there's somebody waiting for Derek Washington right away. Well, what have you seen? What, why has Bowling Green been successful here on defense where Illinois a week ago was not? It appears they're not trying to pressure Blaine Gabbard. Uh, with, we, when you get defensive pressure, Blaine Gabbard's taught, and he understands where the ball needs to go, and it needs to go there immediately. And now, with people sitting back, he's got more time to think, and that makes things a little more difficult. And sometimes with a young guy, that's not necessarily the best thing. That is correct. And that goes deep into the end zone off the foot of Jay Carey, so it'll be first and 10 for Bowling Green on the 20-yard line with 6.52 to go here in our first quarter of play. If you're Bowling Green, you come in from the MAC and you're taking on a Big 12 school, a school that's been ranked in the top 25 and is again this week. But for the last couple of seasons, you've weathered the storm, so to speak, and now all of a sudden, it's a football game. You relax. Bowling Green's pretty much always relaxed. That's what they're taught. These guys play a Big 10 or a Big 12 opponent every year, and they know they know what to expect. They don't get intimidated very easily, and they're going to come out. They're going to come out to play. They have nothing to lose. Sheehan will hand it off. This is Jeter, a little misdirection. Stays on his feet, and the ball is loose as they stripped it. And it looks like Bowling Green has recovered. That's a little bit out of the tendency of Bowling Green based on their performance last week. They, they just ran the ball. They shifted it tight end into the power eye. Just ran the ball out of the power eye. They haven't done that at all. So Missouri may be a little bit confused on defense. Haven't seen anything like this yet. It's, 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 very, it's very interesting to see how much you can change in a week. Jasper Great. Wait a Simmons there. Great job getting get your hand in there, just like your Todd. Try to yank that ball out of there by Jasper Simmons. They pick up the first down, six and a half to go. First quarter of play. Jeter out of the backfield now. They put him in motion. Sheehan wants to throw the football to Jeter across the middle. And the catch made, and across midfield he goes. 
Missouri came with another blitz on that play, and Tyler Sheehan's picked it up every single time and, and found his open receiver. Um, I wonder if they're going to wonder if Missouri's going to sit back a little bit more and, just, and just play play off him a little bit instead of instead of running people in Tyler Sheehan's face. He's got three years' experience under his belt, so he understands where the ball needs to go and win. That was Hardy Ricks with the stop for Missouri. Sheehan in the offense now driving against this Tigers D. Jeter gets the call. Now a little play action. They'll swing it out, and it's incomplete. Although very good play action there by Bowling Green. And uh, the intended receiver was uh, Ray Hudson, and just out of his reach. 5.55 to go in our first quarter of play. Sheehan so far, 5 of 9, 50 yards, and his longest just moments ago, 21, and hooking up with Jeter out of the backfield. We work from the shotgun here. Plenty of time. Wide open underneath. And it's another first down for the Falcons. Ray Hudson, the wide receiver, picks up the first down. That's the thing about that's the thing about playing the cover two. Missouri's Missouri's defense in a cover two that time they run a little twist from the outside and it just leaves so many holes in the short zone if the quarterback has time to, to find them. Cover two quickly. What does that mean? Cover two. You got two deep two deep safeties. And you've got squat corners. The the safeties are bailing out of there. So if you can find a guy on the hash in the middle of, or in an intermediate zone, then he's going to be open. Five and a half to go. That's Jeter. Not much of a pickup, and that's Weatherspoon in on the stop along with Simmons. Once again, you're going to be calling that guy's name a lot tonight, Dan. Number 12, Sean Weatherspoon will not stop. If you're wondering about, and there's Dave Steckel, who is the new defensive coordinator for the Tigers. If you're wondering about the MAC and some of the teams in there, Buffalo, Akron, of course, Bowling Green, Toledo, Ball State, Northern Illinois. And they are in the East, and Bowling Green predicted fifth in their preseason poll in the East. They don't look anything like a fifth-place team tonight so far. Plenty of time here. Sheehan now will run for it. He'll pick up the first down, avoids a hit, and gets out of bounds. Uncharacteristic of Tyler Sheehan to tuck it and run, but he really didn't have anything on that play. Missouri comes with another blitz. Go right up right up the middle, Luke Lambert, Mike Backer. And he doesn't get to him. That's what happens if you you leave a zone and you vacate with a blitz. It's some something's going to be open, whether it's a receiver sitting in the zone or just a hole. And that time Tyler Tyler Sheehan took advantage of that hole. So just over four and a half to play, first quarter. Bowling Green driving here on the Tigers. Jeter, nice move up the middle, avoided the initial tackler. And he's close to a first down. He's got those quick feet that we heard about this week. That's why they like Willie Jeter. He's like he's a little scat back like a water bug. He can make that first guy miss in the hole. And right there you see it, that quick cutback. That's enough to gain. That's enough to gain at least five or six yards every single time. So that's five rushes, 37 yards overall. And Sheehan kept it himself. And that'll move the chains again. Jeter so far, four carries, 26 yards. Sheehan is 6 of 10, 62 yards, and his longest is 21, and Dave Steckel is looking for help. Against Illinois, two opportunities, red zone defense, one touchdown, one field goal. The fact was there was only two times that Illinois had a chance. Now they have it on the 13 for Bowling Green. It's first and 10. Little shovel pass to Jeter. And he's back to the original line of scrimmage. Great pursuit off the edge there. Jeter had no place to go once he caught that shovel. Jackie Smith, the sophomore, 6'4", 250, was in there for the stop. And that's a good linebacking core right there. Weatherspoon and Lambert. Oh, that's a great tandem. I'd say one of the best in, in the Big 12 right now. Those guys can... Those guys can fly to the ball. Luke Lambert's a bigger kid. I saw him in, in film study the other day. And 6'3", 230, 235, he's a good-sized kid. Great-looking athlete. There's a look at Lambert, who wears number 33. It's second down and nine with the ball on the 12. Nick Wiecki checks in. 
for the Falcons. Little play action. They'll swing it to the right side. This could be six, and it is. Untouched. He goes in. That's Ray Hudson. A 12-yard touchdown reception. And Bowling Green strikes first. Hudson made a great move there after uh, after the catch. That's what you judge receiver by yak yards, yards after catch. And that guy can really make some things happen. Just a quick move off the little screen. Great blocking and just slips into the end zone. All he needed was all he needed was seven yards and he, he picked him up. Jerry Phillips on for the extra point, and it is good. It sneaks through, and Bowling Green against number 25, Missouri. They strike first. Hudson, a 12-yard touchdown reception. 7-0. Falcons from the back. So it's 7-0 as Hudson... Ray Hudson, 12-yard touchdown reception, and that completed a long drive as it was 10 plays, 80 yards in four minutes, and the touchdown reception here by Hudson. Nifty move and untouched. Hardy Ricks is there to make the play, but that's a tough, that's a tough play for a strong safety to make in space versus a wide receiver. And how about the uh, senior here, Sheehan? He looks sharp. He does. We, he missed one guy that was wide open, but otherwise he's been right on target, and that's about what we expected out of him if we can't get pressure on him. So 8 of 12 and 74 yards. The win streak against Missouri. This is current right now. Oklahoma 6, Texas 4. That dates back to 01. And Bowling Green, it dates back to 2001. And that's uh, at 2. And so the Falcons will kick it away. Simmons is back deep. Low kick. Handled at the 19 to the 35. And Missouri will have good field position after the return by Jackson. That was a great presence of mind to field that kick where he did by Jarrell Jackson. Usually you'll see the up back left that thing travel all the way back to the uh, to the deep man and then he wouldn't have gotten as much out of it. You made a great point where you know Gabbard at this point as you said they're they're playing back and letting him make decisions not a lot of pressure all of a sudden you start to think and you're not reacting. Oh it makes it makes things a lot differently or a lot different for him just because you don't I mean you know what you're prepared for but if they start giving you different different looks it's, it's tough. Gabbard running into trouble and the ball is loose and Bowling Green may have it. Bowling Green has got it. Gabbard fumbled. Bowling Green in great field position. We didn't see any of that last week out of Blaine Gabbard. Anytime he got flushed, he got rid of the ball immediately. They may want to take another look at this because I'm not sure if he's, I'm not sure that Blaine Gabbard was still up. I think his knee may be down before this ball comes out. Yes, I think you're right. It appears that way. This this thing might get overturned. I think Bowling Green's rushing out there to run a play before that before they have a chance to look at it. Left knee down, then the ball popped out. There they even the officials come. They're gonna yeah. stop it. You picked uh, that up right away. His left knee was down. It looked like it to me, but I mean as I was saying. Blaine Gabbert didn't do any of that last week. And again, this is a product of not getting comfortable early. As a young QB, they've got, he's got to be in positions to, to do some things that he's comfortable with and have some early success in order to get his bearings and get his feet underneath him. Well, with the quarterback and top three receivers from last year's team gone, can the Tigers run? When you have a situation like this where Gabbert may be struggling a little bit, and you're going to have times like this, but... You know, can you run the football? We're going to find out. You know, they struggled with it last year. Uh, Derek Washington a, is a great back. They just got to, they've got to block guys up front, and that's that's the issue with having a relatively inexperienced offensive line. Now the question is, was the ball loose before the left knee was down? Take a look here. Down. It's very close. It is. A, that's a close play. The average on their plays, by the way, average yardage has been 0.8 per play for the Missouri Tigers to start this game. 
that's tough. That's not what they're looking for. I, again, as, as we were talking about, I talked to Coach Yost earlier in the week. Getting the call here. After further review, the play stands as called. Fumble with the recovery by Bowling Green. First down. Wishful thinking on my part, Dan. Yeah, you know what, though? It was, it was so close as the ball was just maybe, maybe slightly loose before the left knee was down. And yeah. I mean, not by much. Missouri defense has to really step up here. It's tough when you give them a short field. So ball on the 22 for Bowling Green. Sheehan rolls right. And there's a good example of a three-year starter. That, I'll tell you what, that's base 4-3. They got pressure that time just from their four down linemen. That's what they haven't been getting today. They've had to, they've had, they've had to use blitzes from their backers to be, to be able to get pressure on them. This time, the front four all get through and make a play. Force, force Sheehan out, he's got to throw the ball away. Hamilton was in there and a good spin move up front. And the pressure was there. Second down and 10, 2.32 to go first quarter. And that's a different quarterback this time. And you know, we see so many times that you'll put skilled players in that backfield. That time it was Freddie Barnes. That's Freddie Barnes. They'll, you'll see some of that today. You'll see Freddie Barnes line up in the Wild Hog, Wildcat, whatever you want to call it formation. They'll put him at quarterback. He's a former quarterback. He's not only their star receiver, but he was a quarterback. He was recruited to Bowling Green as a quarterback and played quarterback for a year. So don't be surprised to see that and don't be surprised to see him throw out of it also. Third and seven. Missouri needs to stop here. One on one, top of the field, and the catch is incomplete, not made. Incomplete, good job defensively by the Missouri Tigers. And in on that coverage was Steeples. That's just a, that's just a man fade right there. Well, Steeples, Steeples makes a great play to get in there late. He's, he, that's what a defensive back's taught. You find the football. So many times today, a, defense will just, a defensive back will just face guard. But right there, Robert Steeples found the football, got his hand in there, and made a tremendous play. Save a touchdown. Bowling Green now 0 for 3. And this is nearly a 30-yard attempt at 0 for 3 on third down conversions. And Jerry Phillips knocks it through. 10 to nothing, Bowling Green. That's a victory for the Missouri defense right there. They got the ball in 20, didn't move, but 3 yards. Well, Gary Pinkle right now, you're thinking, okay, We've got a young quarterback in there making his first start at home, coming off a huge win. But all of a sudden, we're down by 10. What's going through his mind? I don't think Coach Pinkle's nervous. I think he's, I think he's, he's got these guys so prepared that every time, every, every once in a while, you're going to face some adversity. This early in the season against a against a MAC opponent, I'd rather have the adversity now than later on. I think Missouri's going to come out now and try to establish a little bit of the running game, get some short passes going, get Blaine Gabbert started, and then they're going to roll. Let's go downstairs to Todd Donahoe. And Todd, I guess uh, we shouldn't be surprised. A team from the MAC doing this to Missouri. That's exactly what I was thinking, Dan. You know, this is a veteran team, Bowling Green. They've got 14 seniors. And since 2001, Bowling Green is 11 and 8 against BCS conference teams. Now, I imagine Bowling Green also looked at the scoreboard today. Uh, Toledo last night beating Colorado. Central Michigan beating Michigan State. Western Michigan almost beating Indiana. Eastern Michigan almost uh, winning in their game against Northwestern. And so, uh, you know, the MAC is a tough conference. Gary Finkel knows. He coached uh, in Toledo for 10 years in the MAC, so I'm not surprised by this. Bowling Green leads the all-time series against Missouri, 3-1, to one, and has won, as we talked about earlier, the last two meetings. Deep in the end zone, they'll take it out. To the 15 and tripped up. Good job on special teams as the Tigers can't get anything going right now, and that was Jasper Simmons on the return, and here's Gabbard. Starting to see a little frustration on the Missouri players' faces right now. Uh, they, the coaches have to get them, get them calmed down right now. This game is far from over. You're down 10 points with a, with a tremendous offense and high power. A lot of, lot of athletes out there. You can make things happen. There's a look at Coach Yost. Quarterbacks coach as well as the offensive coordinator. Ball on the 17 of Missouri. And a quiet, stunned crowd here at Furrow Field. This is Washington. He'll pick up maybe three on the play. 
Derek Washington, as I talked about before, as Jones makes the stop, was very quiet in the Dome a weekend ago against Illinois. He was quiet, but this guy, Derek Washington, is on the Doak, watch, Doak Walker watch list. He's averaged 5.6 yards per carry in his career at Mizzou. So this guy can make plays. He just doesn't get a whole lot of chances with this passing offense. Gabbert. Oh, almost picked off, and good job defensively by Williams uh, Bowling Green. And going back to Derek Washington, he had 61 rushing yards against Illinois. And 53 of those came in the second half. And that's a look at Perry, one of their very talented wideouts. Again, Bowling Green just rushes their front. I've, uh, this, is, this is a team that blitz 47% of the time last week. And they haven't, they haven't given Blaine, Blaine Gabbert that much pressure. He's, they're giving him the pressure look, but they're not coming. Third and seven. Gabbert. Plenty of time. It's a flag on the play, and it could be a hold against Missouri. It looks like a hold, but once again, they're showing, they're confusing Blaine Gabbert. They're, they're showing him a five-man front. Everybody's dropping out. They're only rushing three. Rich Lumiere with the call. Personal foul. Personal foul. Grabbing the face Grabbing mask. From the 92 of the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Well, that's big. That's Kevin Alvarado. A redshirt sophomore for Bowling Green. Boy, did they need that. The Tigers got to get something going here. That's a huge penalty. You absolutely can't have that. That's an experience. You got a, you got a sophomore that uh, hasn't played a whole lot, making a stupid mistake. Blaine Gabbard, if you're wondering, three for eight for one yard. And we'll swing it to the left side. A short pickup that time. Denario Alexander. I'm very impressed with the speed of this Bowling Green team. Whenever Missouri gets an opening, gets a seam, they, they're closing pretty quick. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a little shocked by that. I couldn't tell that speed on film. Gabbard, a little option play, and he'll pitch it to the right side. Washington, oh, what a move as he spins out of trouble. And then knocked out of bounds near the 41. Great spin move by Derek Washington on that play. And that's what you're talking about there. That's great talent and speed and quickness of the feet that he possesses. Yeah, it looks like there's nothing there. Blaine Gabbard makes the right read. You got to end up field. And, and number 24 is in place. He just, Jamal Brown, and he's a great player. That's one of their strengths, that, that kid at free safety. And just Derek Washington just leaves him there. And he's a senior. And they will not get the playoff before the quarter comes to a close. It'll be third and four for Missouri. That's the end of the first quarter. And Gary Pinkle can't be happy with what he's seen in the first 15 minutes of play. As the Tigers here at home, close to 70,000 in their home opener. And they trail by 10. 12-yard touchdown reception. And then the fumble by Gabbert sets up the field goal. 10 0. University of Missouri alumni know the road to success is paved in black and gold. Z O U. Z O U. Though you leave Mizzou, Mizzou will never leave you. Z-O-U. Forever. Major League Soccer is coming right at you on FSC. The top teams. Yeah! The biggest matches. And the best coverage all season long. Oh, he struck! This is why we watch Major League Soccer all season long on FSC. Right wing Taylor, head and shoulder fake. 15 footer for the win off the rim. Good. Missouri knocks off Kansas. The Tigers come to Oklahoma City and bring home a tournament title. Win number 30. And on to the Sweet 16 for a date against the second seed, Tigers of Memphis. Missouri eliminates Memphis. The Tigers are heading to the Elite Eight. Now you just 
And next week, we'll visit with Mike Anderson, the head basketball coach, as we'll have another pay-per-view against Furman next weekend here from Farrell. Bowling Green, a 10-0 lead as we start play here at the second quarter. And we visited with uh, head coach Gary Pinkle about Blaine Gabbard. He said it was one of the best performances he's seen a young man make in his debut as a starter. I can't wait to see him and how he reacts in the home opener and how he responds to a near flawless game. Well, first quarter in, four of eight, five yards and one fumble. Well, you know, it's it's early. And Coach, coach Pinkle said from the beginning he was concerned that Blaine would come out and try to impress and try and feel like all the eyes were on him and have high expectations of himself based on the flawless performance last week. You're never going to be flawless, and he, though he was close last week, he still made a couple bad reads here and there. This this week he just starts off a little bit shaky, but he's, he's he'll come around. It's one of those things that you just kind of shake him off. You're always going to face adversity. You just got to look at the very next play as a, as a QB. If you're Coach Yost, how do you shuffle things up here and, and switch what uh, we just saw over the first 15 minutes? It all depends. I think right now, Coach Yost is seeing some things from Bowling Green that he didn't really expect. The Bowling Green, he knew that they were going to try to line up in, a diff in a, several different fronts, fake different stunts, fake blitzes, and back out of them. And he thought that he'd be able to see them a little earlier. Plus, Bowling Green's doing some stuff that they didn't do on film uh, last week. So he's he's just trying to, he's trying to learn, try to figure it out, and he will because that's what Coach that's what Coach Yost does. He's a student of the game, and he figures out exactly how to beat the defense. So the Tigers have it on their own at 41, and this will be third down and four as we start playing the second quarter here at Faroe Field. Five wide receivers for Gabbard. Over the middle, and that's incomplete, and no flags on the play. He was looking for West Kemp, who looked to be double covered. That was that was at, that was actually the right read by Blaine Gabbard there. They're just I'm telling you, Bowling Green is covering some people pretty well. That time they brought the the, the Sam backer, Jarrett Sanderson, off the edge, and that's he vacated that zone, and that's where Gabbard's taught to throw the ball. So at that point, I mean, it, they're just Bowling Green is playing great defense. It's not enough, it's not anything that Blaine Gabbard's doing wrong or Missouri's doing poorly. They're just being outplayed on on defense right now. It was James Schneider who got his hand on it, and the Tigers will punt it away. Jay Carey's been busy so far. Jeter is back deep to receive. It's a short kick, and it takes a Bowling Green bounce at the 32-yard line. It is a stunned, quiet crowd here at Faroe. A look at the first quarter stats, and here they are. And first down, you see Bowling Green with seven, Missouri with three. The passing yards, 74 to five. Total yards, 115 to 20. You can't have that. Mizzou, Mizzou cannot have that. And, I th and again, I think they'll pick it up second quarter. They're, they're going to get rolling and hope they don't wait too long. She and now will go under center with a 10-point lead. Play action. Rolling to his left. Fires it away. And it's out of bounds. That's one thing that if Missouri can do, they're going to be successful. If you can force Sheehan to his left, he doesn't get he doesn't get his shoulder squared particularly well when he goes to his left. All week last week, when he went to his left, he he tried tried his best to get the ball out as quickly as possible. The closer you get to the sideline, the, the harder time he's going to have. And that was Baston who was chasing the quarterback Sheehan, and he is a fan favorite here in Columbia. A little quick out, and the catch made. And still on his feet, trying to get extra yardage was Freddie Barnes. So it brings up a third down. Geddes in on the stop for the Tigers. Freddie Barnes is a guy that they're really trying to get going now. There's a great break on the ball right there by by Missouri, but Freddie Freddie Barnes just lets keep him. If you keep him under wraps, they're going to be a lot better off. Third and five. In rolling left. Chase from the pocket and incomplete. As the defense steps up on this possession for the Tigers against Bowling Green here. It looked as if 
somebody got a hand on that ball or got a hand on Sheehan's arm. But and Rutland was in on the coverage there. Once again, once again, if you force him to the left, oh yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's Alden Smith coming off the edge right there that, that gets a hand on, on Sheehan's arm. But that's, that's what you got to do. If you force that kid to the left, Missouri's going to be successful with that. And Smith is a redshirt freshman. Nice punt here. Fielded at the 17 as the ball is loose and Bowling Green recovers. My goodness. You never see that. You never see that. They, they had on, Bowling Green had on an angle punt. You angle the punt so that the receiver doesn't, or the punt, the punt returner doesn't have a room to take, take it back across the field. Here, instead of going out of bounds, the ball just flips up in the air and it gets caught. I mean, it's, 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 it's a fumble. The ball never even touches the ground. It's That's Neil just unheard of. Dahlman on the uh, recovery. And the only question I would have for you was his foot out of bounds. I don't know. I don't know if they'll take a look at that. They had a ref right there. Uh, it, it didn't look like it to me at that point, but uh, we, could, we can always hope. So two Missouri turnovers here in the first half. And now another great chance for the Falcons to cash in. Jeter to his right. Still on his feet and then finally knocked out of bounds. Well, he is quick. He's explosive. You get him, get him the ball early and uh, give him a little bit of hole. He's going he's gonna to make it into, make it into a big gainer. So Gabbard had the fumble, and now on the punt return, a fumble by the Tigers, and they, for Bowling Green, they have great field position. Just looked like an outside zone play. I mean, he's, he's just stretching it until he, he finds a hole. He finds that little crease and gets up in the hole. Second down and three on the 11. Sheehan wants to throw, swing it to the left side. And Mizzou is ready for it. Good job. And reading it perfectly was Kevin Rutland, the junior, as Barnes made the catch. This is one of those third downs coming up that if they don't get the first down and do kick a field goal, again, it's one of those victories that you talk about. This is huge right here. Again, that's two turnovers inside the 20-yard line. If you can come, if you can hold the opposing team, here's that short yardage again. The Freddie Barnes under center. Room to the right side. Ball on the left hash, a flag on the play. Barnes up the middle, still on his feet inside the five, but again, a flag on the play. I think the boundary side end for Missouri lined up off sides that time. I'm not positive, though. Oh, uh, looks like they're moving back, though. Illegal shift by the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay third down. Yeah, and I'm glad I'm, I was glad I'm wrong about that one. <laughs> Then you're talking about first and goal from the fourth. <laughs> Rough start here for the Tigers, 12.44 to go first half. Missouri, by the way, offensively, six possessions, four punts, and two fumbles. Third and six. Sheehan, rolling right. Just dumps it away. So a huge penalty against Bowling Green. Instead of having first and goal, now it's a fourth down and six. And the field goal unit will come on. Once again, great contain, great coverage by Missouri. They didn't run a blitz. They just had Brian Coulter forcing Tyler Sheehan out of the pocket on that play. And both teams are 0 for 5 on third down conversions tonight. <laughs> Phillips, the kick is up and it hooks, but is good. 13 to nothing. Bowling Green. Again. Another bit of a victory for the Missouri defense right there. And after what you saw last weekend against the Fighting Illini, it's hard to believe we're seeing this. Without a doubt, particularly with the lack of offensive production that you mentioned earlier. To only be down 13 points, though, that's a blessing. 
Gabbard is four for 10. She and the senior, 10 of 19 for 82 yards and a touchdown. Derek Washington rushing for Missouri, five carries for 21 yards. And Jeter, that little scat back, and he has been good so far. Five carries, 33 yards. Ray Hudson has the touchdown reception for Bowling Green. And that was four plays, four yards, a minute 28, and a 32-yard field goal for Bowling Green to make it 13 to nothing. And so while it has been in many ways lopsided, and shockingly so, you're only down by 13, you're at home, and you're close to 70,000 here tonight. So you think things can turn around. I turn around real fast with this offense. I think we saw that last week. They, they can score, they can have an 80-yard touchdown any given play. I mean, you never, you never know with these guys. And, and with, this, with the weapons that Blaine Gabbert's got on the outside, with, uh, with Perry and Denario Alexander uh, in particular, those guys can take it the distance. Blaine Gabbert's got the arm to get the ball to him, so a little protection and, uh, and just find some zones, find some holes in, in the zone that Bowling Green's playing because they're not playing any man coverage and they haven't, haven't shown any this year, actually. So I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think there's going to be some holes and Blaine Gabbert's going to find them. Let's go downstairs to Todd Donahoe. Todd. Well, you know, Dan, Dave Yost, the offensive coordinator, said one thing that Bowling Green likes to do is they like to confuse you. So far, Missouri's offense looks confused. But one advantage Missouri has this year is that they have an offensive line coach on the bench, on the sidelines. It's Bruce Walker, and he is communicating with the offensive line. In past years, the offensive line coach has been Dave Christian who was also the offensive coordinator, and of course he was up in the booth. And that kick is low, angled to the left side, and out of bounds, so a penalty on the play. And Todd, I want to go back down to you for a moment as you, and there you see the coach that you just mentioned, but the flag on that play, and Todd, you know, what's it like down there right now? You're on that Mizzou sideline. Well, yeah, I'm on the student sideline, and, you know, dare I say, it is, it's stunned right now. I mean, this is a full house tonight. You look, every corner is, is filled tonight. Gary Pinkle says he wanted everybody dressed in, in gold. They're dressed in gold. The students are trying to help them, but look, there's not much to cheer about so far. What did you say? Six possessions, four punts, and two turnovers? Right, right. 12-14 to go here, first half, and the ball is at the 40, so... Good field position for Gary Pinkle in this offense, and let's see if they can't get something going. How about just trying one deep and seeing what you get there? Open it up. Instead, they'll hand it off. Little hole to the right side, and Washington is close to the first down for the Tigers. But that's, that's the fan in me. And then there's the <laughs> realist in me that says hand it off to Derek Washington. Derek Washington will find a hole if you give him the opportunity. You know, he's, he's so he's such a patient runner, and there, there you see an example of those patients. He kind of waits for his offensive line to find their blocks, sits back, and then explodes through the hole. Second down and one. Hand off left side. There he is again. Washington, little hesitation, picks up the first down and then knocked out of bounds near the 35. So this is back-to-back -back plays where Missouri's offense finally gets something going. And I expect to see this. I expect this actually to continue. Pull your tackle. That, that's not even where the hole was supposed to open up. The hole was supposed to open up inside, but Derek Washington takes some liberties and gets and gets the corner and gets upfield. Number 37 of Bowling Green. Another first down. Gabbert dumps it underneath. And the catch made. And that is Alexander with the catch, his second of the evening. Maybe that's what they needed. Maybe they just need a spark from the running game to open up things for the passing game. Exactly. With Missouri's offensive line just dominating, or as far as, as far as size goes, they're so much bigger than the D-line, they should be able to fire off and, and run the ball. And there's a handoff left side. Watch out. That's a 33-yard touchdown. No, they're going to say he was just knocked out of bounds. Just knocked out of bounds. And I believe there is a flag on the play. Well, there's that speed of Lawrence that we talked about. It looks like a hold on one of the wide receivers. I was out there trying to block and do a good job for Kendall Lawrence. Holding number 16 on the offense. The penalty will be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. That's that's tough. That's an interesting play right there. They ran, that's all that is is another zone replay that you saw Blaine Cabert keep earlier in the game. This time he gave it up. They just ran it from a different angle, and 
I guess it was Brandon Giroux out there. It was. That, uh, that, that was holding, trying to do a great job for his running back. And, you know, you, you hate to see that, but as a running back, you love seeing your wide receivers blocking. Second down and four. Washington up the middle and spinning. Let's go downstairs, and that's another first down for the Tigers. Todd, what do you have? Dan, that infraction uh, happened right in front of me, and, and Gary Pinkle was just living. He's yelling at the official. That infraction took place 20 yards behind Kendall Lawrence. Kendall Lawrence was at the goal line when that thing took, uh, took place. First and 10 now. Thanks, Todd, on the 25. Ten and a half to go in our first half. Mizzou is driving. Little play action. Gabbert. Washington out of the backfield. Nifty little move. Still on his feet. Close to a first down before he's knocked out. I saw them running that play at, uh, in the walkthrough yesterday, and that, that was one of my favorites. That's Coach Hill, who's one of, who's my wide receivers coach when we were here, and he, he told me he, he called out the called out the play, and I still remember it. A little fake with the running back going out to the going out to the flats and getting him the ball. Brock Olivo scored a 30-yard touchdown against Nebraska on that play. Of course, you remember that play. <laughs> they run it the other way. No, that's and this that's is Washington. That's the read that we saw earlier that you talked about where Gabbert can either keep it Correct. or hand it off. That was, a, that was the same play that that uh, they just got the penalty called on and the touchdown called back just because uh, just because of a block downfield. But that's a, they're running it from different angles, but that's that, that's that zone read play, and it's very successful. A lot of these spread football teams are running that play. Well, the Tigers running the football here, and it seems that uh, that's opened things up. Very much so. It looks like Blaine Gabbert's more comfortable. I mean, he's, he's got his feet underneath him. He's, he's setting and throwing. He's going to be fine. Under 10 to go, first half. Gabbert looks over to his sideline. Play clock down to one. And did he get it off? Yes, he did. Gabbert rolls to his right. Late flag on the play. That could be a hold. And the coaching staff of Bowling Green is saying, that they should not have been able to get that play off. Now, there was a late flag, but they wanted the, the play to be called dead. They thought the play clock was at zero. You can see him trying to plead his case. Number 66 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. That's Levels again, and that's his uh, second flag that he's seen uh, called against him. He appears to be having a hard time with that, with that defensive front for Bowling Green right now. 13 to nothing. Bowling Green leading Missouri with 9.28 to go first half. Gabbard on the night, 6 of 12, 19 yards, and his longest has been 9. Following the penalty, ball to 24. First down, Tigers. Gabbard tries to go underneath, nearly picked off. Great defensive play West Camp by there. West Camp right yep. there. West Camp was a young man that played on a state championship team at DeSmet High School in St. Louis, and he all of a sudden turns into a defensive back. Anytime that ball gets tipped, it's a free ball, and West Camp sees that and, and makes the play. Could have been caught, could have been caught, but it's, that's a high, that's a tough throw on that slip screen. So a second down and long here for Blaine Gabbard. Hands it off, big hole. And they'll get down near that 20-yard line. And that was Lawrence again, the speedster, out of the backfield. So we've seen a lot of Lawrence and Derek Washington, and again, no more tonight. So what does he have up his sleeve here with the third down and long? The third and 16. Play action for Gabbard. Has a man. Incomplete. That was a tremendous defensive play by Roger Williams. And I think he missed the open receiver. He went to the wrong one. And a couple of those receivers are questioning why he went to, I believe this is Kemp. Yes, it is. And he's got a double post route. Got a, got a double post route. He just missed it. He's rolling. That's a tough roll. He's rolling to his left. He's got to throw back across his body. He's got to figure out which which guy in cover four is going to be open. And that was Jackson that was open. This is Russell, the sophomore out of Jackson, Missouri. 
give is up and good. So finally, Mizzou gets on the board. Of course, Russell replacing NCAA career leader in kicking accuracy, Jeff Wolford. 13 to 3, 18 27, or 827 to go, excuse me, here in the first half. That's when they go back and watch film, that's going to be a missed opportunity for Blaine Gabbert. Jackson seemed to be open, didn't he? Jarrell Jackson, or Jarrell Jackson was was open. He's running that running that inside post. It looked like a double a, a, a double sail route or a double post route. Both receivers coming across the middle, and he just he just picked the wrong one. So it's 10 plays, 39 yards, 3:24 the time of possession, and a 38-yard field goal to get Missouri on the board. Now the average start of possession for both teams, Missouri on their own 25-yard line. For Bowling Green, their average start of possession, their own 40. So they've had great field possession. And, uh, you know, to see where they start here, let's see if Missouri can't pin them back and then uh, let this defense go to work. First thing Missouri has to do is win that field position battle. And if they, if they want to crawl back into this game and, and get some more points before half. Last drive, one of the... Uh, Guys that really stood out for the Tigers, and we expect him to stand out all season long. That's Derek Washington. Again, he's, he's a tremendous back. Averaging, he averaged over six yards of carry last week. Averaged 5.6 for his career at Missouri. Quick feet, patient runner. I mean, when they, you get a fullback in there with him, he's a, he's a completely different kid. They pull that tackle or pull the guard. He, he, he all makes some plays, get somebody in front of him. And he's got a, he's a strong runner, strong arms. He can stiff arm somebody, get outside, he can run, run through you or run around you. Coach Joe's telling us earlier this week how Washington loves the tight games and loves to have that pressure on him. Well, he got some pressure here tonight as you see the scoring drive from Mizzou to get them on the board. It's 13-3. The kick will be taken at the five. At the middle, wide open, now to the outside, back to the inside. We talked about that field position being such a key for both teams. The return there was Roger Williams and a huge return for Bowling Green. Anytime that you need your kicker to get in the returner's way to make, for somebody to make the tackle, that's, that's difficult. Got a huge hole. That's exactly how they drew up the return. Right sideline return. And he, he hits the wedge and he's, and he's gone. Now we asked Gary Pinkle about a hangover effect from last weekend. He said, absolutely not. We've worked our kids extremely tough, and you see the career leaders and kickoff return. And Roger Williams, one of the best. But in watching tonight, you have to wonder just a bit. Here's Jeter. Bounces it outside. Look at that speed. Flag on the play. He's at the 20 and brought down inside the 15. A flag, though, at the 40-yard line. Well, he made something out of nothing there. Yeah, he did. Uh, th that's the thing about Jeter. That's they, the coaches talk about him and talk about the fact that he is a water bug. Uh, the head coach Dave Clawson said, "You get this ball, get this kid, kid the ball, let him get outside. Then you, he's he something special. Ten yards he makes people miss." The main first down. So a holding. Penalty and Bowling Green a couple of times now after big pickups. They've had penalties with those. It's uh, cost them points. That's the toughest thing for an offensive player because it, it didn't appear that, that that hold really meant anything there. He didn't need any help. So that's 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 got to be tough for Willie Jeter right there. Dave Clawson, the head coach at Bowling Green. Was the offensive coordinator last year at Tennessee. And Lane Kiffin took over. Also coached at Villanova, Lehigh, Buffalo, and Albany. And in fact, he was the two-time Division I AA Coach of the Year. So Bowling Green, penalties this half. They have 80 yards and penalties against them. As the ball rests at the 49 of Missouri.
Sheehan sets up a screen. And they get it across to the 44-yard line. The catch by Freddie Barnes. And Weatherspoon was in on that tackle, and he read it perfectly. They really like that, that trips into the boundary look with Freddie Barnes. Look for later in the game, they run a double pass off that also. It's, again, Barnes used to be a quarterback. They like that little slip screen or bubble screen into that boundary with him. Second and five. No pickup on the play. Third down and five coming up. And was basting on a stop. And both teams have struggled with third down conversions in this first half of play. And the crowd, 70,000 to their feet again. Starting to get a little noise here at the zoo. Hudson, who is in motion. Sheehan, underneath, deflected. Incomplete, good job by the Missouri defense on the stop. That was Rutland. Great job, great hold by the Missouri defense there. And Bowling Green will have to punt it away. Missouri comes with an all-out blitz, goes to man coverage there. And Rutland is in the right, right place at the right time, covering his man, doing his job. And a receiver was Hudson. Geddes deep for the Tigers, standing at his own eight. Low snap, look out, and they get it away. Winds up being a good kick, and Geddes a fair catch inside his own 10. 6.17 to go. The Missouri home opener, and they trail Bowling Green. 13-3. The Tigers will have it first and 10 on their own 10. Coach Yost on the left, Gary Pinkle on the right, 13-3. Let's go downstairs, Todd Donahoe. You know, guys, I think so far the Tiger defense seems to, you know, figure things out here, but the offense is still confused. Now, oddly enough, where did Missouri get this offense? A few years ago, Gary Pinkle sent his offensive coaches to Bowling Green to learn this offense. But so far, this offense doesn't look that good tonight. Corby, you mentioned something earlier, and that is Missouri's got playmakers. To me, their top playmaker is Denario Alexander. What can they do to get the ball in his hands? It's all schematics, Todd. I mean, he, he's got to, with, with what Missouri's doing and with what Bowling Green's doing to them, there's no way that they can isolate a particular receiver. They've got to take what's, Blaine Gabbard's got to take what's being given to him. And that's, and they're taking Denario Alexander out of this game right now. Alexander, two catches and nine yards. That's it. Just trying to get a little breathing room here, and they're going to lose yardage on this play as Washington is tangled up and finally a whistle. We'll see they, where they mark it, but uh, roughly around that five-yard line. I expect Missouri to come out with a heavy dose of Derek Washington this drive. And you, when you're pinned deep, there's not a whole lot of different things you can do. You want to give your, want to give your offense some room to breathe. And uh, it's it's tough when you run every play out of the shotgun, though, because you're automatically starting five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So there's a look at Alexander. He is back in the game. Five wide receivers for Missouri. Gabbard on the goal line, now in his own end zone. Gabbard flushed from the pocket again. He'll tuck it. He'll run and knocked out of bounds at the six. The situation here, too, 529 to go. Bowling Green, you know, if they get a stop here and Missouri has to punt it, you're talking about field position being in perfect shape, more than likely, with uh, just a decent punt. Without a doubt. But I'll tell you what, Missouri's defense is playing such good football right now. I mean, here we go. You, I mean, Blaine Gabbert has, has done everything he needs to do to this point as far as not making any crucial mistakes. He just got to keep from making one right now, and the defense will keep him in the game. Gabbert again with time. And that's a catch, but well short of the first down. Wes Kemp with the catch. And that was taken at the 11-yard line, so Missouri will have to punt again. Again, the offensive line is doing a great job. Bowling Green's just doing a tremendous job in coverage right now.
And Jay Carey, the senior punter, on to kick it away. Let's see if Bowling Green wants to come at it. As, uh, he is in his own end zone, and Jeter is at the 40-yard line, his own 40. He's going to set up a return here. Nice kick, and Jeter driven back. Look at this kick. And it takes a Missouri bounce. That's exactly what the Tigers needed. Tremendous punt. Huge. You see that Harry the fourth, and he does that to honor his grandpa, who is watching tonight. He won the fourth on his jersey, and he's got it. It's a 59-yard kick. Once again, that's part of the field position battle right there. That changes the complexion of things. It changes the play calling for Bowling Green right now. Check out a 69-yard punt. Ball on the 20. Sheehan wants to throw. Watch out. Front down at the 13. There it is. Bastin in on the stop for Missouri. Jerron Bastin, the only only defensive lineman that started last year, is going to step up and he's going to make some plays. They're, they're, they're holding him. It doesn't matter what you do to him. He's, he's bound and determined to get to the quarterback, Sheehan. He's clearly the emotional leader of this defensive line. Second and 14. No we'll catch to the right side. Not much of a game. Maybe a pickup at three. The Missouri defense. We go back to 2008. Juice Williams, 451 yards, five touchdowns. Last weekend, 179 yards. Runs for 27. And they held the Illini scoreless until the second quarter, which was a field goal. So much improved from the previous season as Weatherspoon is asking close to 70,000 to come alive on this third down and 11. She in a little pump fake. Now he'll run for it. Runs out of bounds, and they'll have to punt it away. Great coverage once again by the Missouri defense. I'm so impressed with this secondary right now, with they're keeping the receivers from Bowling Green under wraps, particularly Freddie Barnes. He's, he hasn't had a breakout day, hasn't been able to get anything going, and I think he's getting a little frustrated. Gettis at his 36. High kick, but short. And Gettis is hit, I believe, by his own player. And the ball is down at the 38. So Gettis knocked down. Third down conversions tonight, 0 for 14 on both sides. 13-3. One of six players that was uh, drafted in the NFL by from Missouri by the uh, NFL teams around the country. And one of them is back here tonight. That's Ziggy Hood, as you just saw him. But uh, Jeremy Macklin and Ziggy Hood both going in the first round. William Moore in the second round. Chase Kaufman, the fine tight end. And Colin Brown and striker Shulock is uh, he went to the Raiders. But there is the Pittsburgh Steeler, Ziggy Hood. For, for he, Ziggy Hood, tremendous defensive tackle, played himself into the first round, basically. He was a projected third, fourth round pick, maybe. But then after, after his play during the season last year, he jumped into the first round. Outstanding football player. Winds up on a pretty good team, too. <laughs> no kidding. Fresh off the opener on Thursday night. So ball on the 38. Here we go with under two and a half to play before halftime is upon us. It's that read again that you talked about. This time he handed it off. Seeing a lot of it. We're seeing a lot more of it coming from the receiver in motion than we're seeing it coming out, coming out of the backfield today. There's Alexander. 
Five wide receivers for the Tigers. Gabbert to throw to the sideline. Catch is made. A little quick out that time to Perry. Bowling Green continues to play that four deep coverage, and they drop the linebackers into zones. They'll give up the short stuff, but they will not give up anything deep. This will be a third and five for Missouri. Trailing by 10 here in the first half. Showing blitz. And Gabbard looks over to the sideline and four coaches flashing signs from Missouri. Gabbard. Near a first down. What a catch. Let's see where the uh, spot it. And that looks to be short of the first down as Alexander made a nice catch. That's, that's when Blaine Gabbard's at his best. When you start pressuring him because he knows exactly where the ball needs to go out of the pressure. He'll, he'll drop back, get rid of the ball quickly. Don't make him sit back there and think and try to find a receiver. So here we go. Fourth and one for the Tigers. Gabbert under center. Lunges forward. And it looks like he picked up the first down. Rarely do you see Blaine Gabbert under center. <laughs> no, you don't. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be hard to keep that 6'5 body from getting that one yard. They pick up the first down. They move the chains. Gabbard all kinds of time over the middle and that's another first down I believe that was Perry with the catch and it was As they mark it at the 39 you see that big arm of Blaine Gabbard let's see really if he gets a little rhythm here yeah, I was about to say let's see if he gets a little rhythm from the shotgun again Gabbard keeps it himself, up the middle. Gabbard, another first down for Missouri inside the 30. There you see those legs. Again, at that 6'4", 240 frame, they like the quarterback draw with them. If, they, if he finds an opening, if he finds a bubble, then he's gonna, he's gonna get up through it. And he, honestly, if you, don't hit, if you don't hit him low, you're not gonna bring him down. Five wide receivers for Gabbard. Rolling to his right and short with that throw. Tender receiver Derek Washington. That time he got a little happy feet and started and started to started to get rid of the ball before he got his feet set. He, he gets a little dash. He steps out of the pocket and just not quite. You know, step into that throw. He gets his body moving to the sideline instead of moving towards the receiver. And it all starts with the feet. People don't understand as a quarterback, it all starts with where your feet are going. It's Corby Jones. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Todd Donahoe with us. Across the middle as he fires it. Incomplete. Alexander, the intended receiver, as that was knocked out of his hands. And in on the coverage was Jamal Brown. If that's anybody else other than number 11 throwing that ball, that ball gets picked. The receiver, the D-back jumps in front of it and picks it off, but he's got so much zip on that ball that the, the, no one can react to it except for his wide receiver. Alexander a little shook up on that sideline and even 60 seconds to play. Third down and 10 from the 27. Gabbard. Incomplete, no flag on the play. Great protection once again. Bowling Green came with a little stunt. Picked it up by the offensive line. Just couldn't find anybody open. Let's see if uh, the Tigers here will attempt a long field goal here. It's 46 yards. You know he's got the leg for it. The kick is up, and it is good. So with 51 seconds, that cuts the lead now to 13 to 6. Well, coming off that last play, again, they bring the Sam Backer off the last play. He gets, he gets picked up, comes inside on twist, and gets picked up by the Missouri Office of Tackle. 
Forced inside. But still can't find anybody open. It doesn't, it doesn't help. So 10 plays, 35 yards, a minute and 38 seconds, and a 46-yard field goal for the Missouri Tigers. And that cuts the lead to 13 to 6. Well, that interior play, you know, even though we did see the incomplete pass, but to pick that up and roll with him, take him inside as his momentum was going that way, and then finish the block. Gabber did have time, but uh, just didn't have the connection. Again, that, that coverage in the secondary is it's pretty tight for Bowling Green. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked by how well they're, they're staying with the Missouri receivers. They're staying in their zones, rather. So 51 seconds to go. The kick is away. They're going to bring it out. Oh, what a hit. What a hit. That gets this crowd fired up. Here's the defensive back, Trey Hobson. That's how you do it. That's impressive. Bowling Green trying to make something happen by bringing, bringing out a kick with, with under a minute left in the half, and that's how you shut it down by Trey Hobson. And it was Roger Williams, who we've talked about being one of the better return men in all of college football. 47 seconds to go, and Bowling Green pinned it deep in their own end as they'll start first and ten on their own nine. They may just be content to hand it to Jeter and let this clock run out. With a lead here in the first half as Jeter gets it across the 15. Usually what teams will do is they'll hand off a couple plays and see if they can spring something. If they if they can get a, a chunk of yards out of a play, then they'll go into a, a no huddle or a hurry up. Gatchkar with the stop for Missouri. Okay. Time out, Missouri. This is their first time out. Now, if you're Missouri, though, you're saying, okay. Please reset to 42 seconds. You take the time out here, and Gary Pinkle is saying, I've got some timeouts to burn. If we can pin them back, either go after the punt, or maybe we get one, two plays offensively on a return that's uh, deep in their end. Absolutely, and that's where Bowling Green got burned by trying to bring that ball out, as opposed to starting on the 20-yard line. They're starting inside their own 10. And that, that, that gives Missouri a much better chance to either to block a punt or to have a chance to go after the punt, use their timeout to get the ball back regardless. And Corby, how about these crowds? And you were part of the reason that uh, people started to come back to Missouri Tiger football, you and your crew that uh, won games. And then, of course, Gary Pinkle really got the thing going. But uh, this is fun to see, isn't it? Oh, it is. I mean, I, I remember when I, when I started here at our opening game of the season, we had about 37,000, my, my true freshman year in 1995. And, and now to see this, it's just, it's unbelievable. And they're down right now, 13 to six to Bowling Green, second down and five, 42 seconds to play. Cheater right side, going nowhere. And timeout Missouri again. So now, exactly what we thought. Now Bowling Green Come is on, going to have a decision. They're gonna decide whether or not they're gonna throw the ball here and try to get a first down and get out of the and, and get out before halftime or they're or they're going to run the ball again let Missouri use their last time out in in hopes that they'll stop Missouri when, once they get the ball back what have you seen differently on both sides of the football meaning the Missouri defense and all of a sudden Bowling Green not moving the football against Missouri here in the last 10 to 12 minutes I've not seen a whole lot of changes I'm just seeing that Missouri defense is, is as knows that their backs against the wall because their offense hasn't been doing a whole heck of a lot but they're still playing with tremendous momentum and tre tremendous speed actually in order to stop Bowling Green from from getting a bigger lead so 37 seconds and it's third down and four the ball on the 16. Jeter bounces it to the left side. Very close to that first down, and I believe he got it. Yes, he did. They'll move the chains, and that may do it now for our first half of play. 
once again, now Bowling Green has a decision to make. Do they try to run the do they try to run a play here and try to and knowing that Missouri has one timeout, they can they can they can air it out this play and see if they can get something out of it. A little extra push and picked up the first down. We have not called the name of the tight end for Bowling Green, and he's considered one of the best in the country and coming off a huge game last weekend against Troy. And that will do it as Bowling Green will be content going into the locker room at halftime, leading on the road against number 25, Missouri. Bowling Green 13, Mizzou 6. Todd Donahoe, let's go downstairs. Got Coach Glossin with us. Coach, by my count, Missouri's had the ball nine times, five punts, two turnovers, and two field goals. Your defense is doing a heck of a job. Well, we've done a good job of keeping it out of the end zone, but they're a very dangerous football team, so uh, we got to really do a better job playing the field position battle. I, I think late in the first half, we gave them field position too often, but credit to our defense, we kept them out of the end zone for 30 minutes. And how about your offense? They started to stall toward the end of the first half. What do you tell them at halftime? Well, right now, we, you know, we've got a seven-point lead, and now we just got to start putting drives together. Uh, I thought we had some breakdown in protection, so we got to firm up a little bit and we got to run the ball better. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. All righty. You know, Dan, uh, it, I'll tell you what kind of first half it's been for Missouri. Their best play is a punt, a 69 yard punt uh, by Jay Carey. Yeah, you're right. It's been a rough go in the home opener tonight here at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. Glad you're with us. A couple of turnovers by the Tigers, resulting in doing some points for Bowling Green. They're trying to pull off an upset after 30 minutes of play. Bowling Green 13, Mizzou 6. Much more to come here at the half. Well, we're back at Faroe Field in Columbia as Bowling Green leads Missouri 13 to 6 here at the half. Corby Jones, Dan McLaughlin with you. Many ways disappointing when you thought about this Missouri offense coming off the, the huge win against Illinois. And, and Corby, we have not seen uh, that offense yet. Let's go downstairs and maybe some of those answers coming. Gary Pinkle standing by with Todd Donahoe. Coach, tough uh, first half for you on offense. What sort of things you talk about at halftime? Well, you know, I think we're, just, we're, we're doing a lot of things ourselves. I think they're playing good. BG, I think, give them credit. But, uh, I think, uh, you know, we had penalties, uh, we're getting negative yards, just we're not executing very well. So we got to settle down and get out and execute and, uh, and uh, continue to play pretty good defense. And defense, you feel pretty good about at this point, I'd say. Well, they, you know, they, they, they got real short fields. We held them to field goals the whole time. So our defense did a lot of good things, but, you know, we're all in this together. Okay, good luck to you. Tigers trail 13 to 6 here. Back up to you, Dan. All right, Todd, good job. And let's take a look at some of those first half highlights. And for Missouri, it took a while for Blaine Gabbard to get things going. It's still, it, it's, it's still things aren't really going quite yet. Uh, I don't remember the last time I've seen a Missouri quarterback throw for 44 yards and a half. Usually it's 44 yards on the first possession. But I mean, he's, he's struggled a little bit. But I think coming out in the second half, they're going to give him some give him some shorter things and let him, let him make some plays that way. And so Gabbard and this Tiger offense, not much to talk about. They did put together a little drive towards the end of the half. There's one of those passes right there that he didn't you know, really roll into, as you talked about. For Bowling Green, they came out guns a-blazing early on. And conversely, Bowling Green's making all the right adjustments. And Tyler Sheehan, as senior quarterback, understanding where the blitzes are coming from, understanding what zones are being voided, and getting the ball where they need, getting the ball where it needs to go. And so Bowling Green as a 13 to 6 lead as we get you set for the start of the second half and Bowling Green will have that first possession and you talked about it uh, Corby the, the fact was the defense of the Tigers second quarter much better. Oh it was tremendous. If you got to look you look back and how the field position that Bowling Green started with and and what they came out of that with I mean that's that's ultimately a success for the defense. And so here we go. Tigers will kick it away as we start our second half of play. Close to 70,000 here tonight at Faro Field. That's what we're told. And we would believe it with this sea of gold that is here and not many seats to be had this evening here in Columbia. So the Tigers kick it away. And Russell kicks it to the five-yard line. Taken there by Bowling Green. And this young man had a good first half as he spins, keeps on his feet. 
and gets it across the 25 down at the 27. And that's where the Falcons will have it. Now, this is a team in the MAC. Again, it's worth repeating, I think, when you talk about teams like Buffalo and Central and Western Michigan, Northern Illinois, Ball State, Eastern Michigan, Kent State, there's a ton of teams in the MAC. And Sheehan and head coach Dave Clawson, they were predicted to finish fifth out of seven teams in the East. And here they are against a top 25 team. And they have a lead by seven. They're a good football team. I, I don't care what anybody says. Those preseason rankings don't mean anything to me. And Sheehan swings it out to the left side. And they'll be shy of the first down by about three. It's no, another one of those little bubbles. They, they, they love throwing that They love throwing that route out there to either two or three wideouts. And here's a look at the stats and what really stands out. Total yards for Missouri and the turnover factor as well. Anytime you go on the road, you can't turn the ball over. And Bowling Green has not done that. As a matter of fact, they have converted on a couple of those turnovers into points and penalties. If there's anything against Bowling Green, it's that. They had 80 yards against them. One, one of those penalties took them out of field goal range on one possession also. That's right. And the other one would have had them inside the 10. Bouncing it to the outside. Jeter across the 40, keeping his feet. Now, he's not a big kid, as you can see right there. Willie Jeter is 5'7", 175 pounds. He stays low to the ground, gets underneath, and just keeps his feet. Football's all about leverage, and he, when you have a low center of gravity like that, he's tough to bring down. Look, the first guy can't bring him down, or rarely brings him down, just because he's so small and he's so slippery. Look at this. I mean, he's almost brought down there, and then he gets the extra yard or two. He's, more, he's deceptively powerful. So Jeter in the backfield. And the pro style set here, which we have rarely seen from either side, and they'll put the tight end in motion. Jeter gets the handoff again. A little stutter step. Close to midfield, he's brought down. Again, making something out of nothing. That's the second time tonight they've moved into that. They've shifted the tight end into that power eye position, which is uh, which is an uncommon formation for them. Only saw it a couple times last week, and that's the second time tonight. And they've run the ball every time we've seen that. You brought up a great point in the first half with Gabbard. When he has been on the move and trying to throw on the run, doesn't settle his feet. He struggles when he settles to throw he's firing bullets out there it's that's that's just his youth I mean he's got the arm strength to be able to throw from every angle he's just got to get his feet pointed downhill and they'll put the tight end in motion again Sheehan little play action swing it to the right side across midfield brought down inside the 45 and that's Freddie Barnes they're going to continue to dink and dunk Missouri until until Missouri steps up and plays those short routes. They'll Bowling Green will accept the five yards per five yards per play any day of the week. Third base bar and grill, big stopping grounds in St. Peter's, Missouri, and they've got the Tiger game on tonight. All the Tiger faithful near St. Peter's in St. Charles, and they're a little concerned, I think, right now. I, I wouldn't be surprised. For good reason. And all of a sudden, Bowling Green moving the football here in their first possession. Watch out. Witherspoon was going after him, and it's incomplete. Well, he kind of comes out of nowhere sometimes to cause havoc, doesn't he? He's a, he's a fast kid. Don't, don't, don't get it fooled. Don't, don't be fooled by his 6'2", 250 uh, height and weight. This guy can flat out run. He's a, he's a legitimate 4'5 kid. So he'll run down, he'll run down any QB in the league. Except for maybe Robert Griffin at Baylor. Yeah. And no one's going to, I mean, there, there's. <laughs> He's a world class sprinter. Olympic so. <laughs> stars that can't catch him. He is something else. And as Tiger fans saw last year, and they almost pulled off a huge upset. Sheehan underneath. That's that senior savvy right there. He, he knew exactly where that ball was going to go. Missouri comes on another blitz. All he needs to do is have a little bit of time, and he gets it right out there to Chris Wright. And this has to be a concern for Gary Pinkle as they are moving the football, but big play here. Third down and one to go. And again, it's that Wildcat formation. Uh, Freddie Barnes in at quarterback. There's some speed in that backfield right now. We haven't, seen, we haven't seen him hand off the ball yet this year out of that formation. We've just seen the quarterback run. He'll run it here, left side, gets the first down, and then some to the outside. And across the 20, picks up the first down, and Bowling Green is rolling again. Again, they just shifted the tight end into a, in basically a quarterback power. They just, just ran off, off tackle with the QB, and that was, all, that was all it took with a lead blocker. A 
little stiff arm there too. First and 10 for the Falcons. Jeter still on his feet. And that will be another point of emphasis this week in practice, wrapping up and finishing the tackle. The, f the first the first guy's got to make that tackle. Uh, Willie Jeter, I know he's I know he's powerful. I know he's I know he's got a low center of gravity. But if you've got a man in the backfield or you got him for it, no gain, you've got to make that tackle. It's Corby Jones, former quarterback and star here in Missouri. I'm Dan McLaughlin, Todd Donahoe here. We see the rushing offense. Jeter again, and that time going nowhere. We talk about a big play now here in this second half. It's this next one upcoming. It'll be third down and seven. They lost a yard on the play. Great job crashing that end to the field by Missouri. Sheehan. First down, and it's with a second effort. No, they're going to say he's not in, just short of a touchdown. Or do they give it to him? Nope, they're going to say just short. Again, again, Missouri, Missouri brought Alden Smith off the edge. Sheehan read it immediately, knew where the knew where the void in the zone was, got rid of the ball, and Freddie Barnes, strong Freddie Barnes, is is carrying. No, I mean, that's that's tough for a DB. You got a corner out there on a on a big wide receiver. You're not gonna you may not bring him down immediately. It, it happens from time to time. And your steeple's getting an earful over there. Why not go to Jeter? Helmet flies off and Jeter. No indication yet. Touchdown. Touchdown, bowling green. It looked like Missouri had him stopped. It looked like a second and third effort may have pushed him through, or maybe some of his offensive linemen pushed him through. Impressive drive to start this second half. And Missouri's in a little bit of trouble here with the extra point. It makes it 20 to 6. Those little legs keep pumping underneath and just kind of finds a way in there. Just finds all he needs is a little seam. Extra point is up and good. And it's 20 to 6. Bowling Green. 11 plays, 73 yards, 509 with the drive and a one yard touchdown. 20 to 6. 20 to 6. Bowling Green with the lead and a methodical drive to start this second half of play. 20 to 6. The Falcons. I'll tell you what, that's exactly what Bowling Green wanted to do. Come out and just and just walk the ball down the field, take what Missouri gave them. It was it was an impressive drive, and it wasn't what Missouri, Missouri, the Missouri team or Missouri fans wanted to see. So there you see the scoring drive, 11 plays. It's all it took, 73 yards, just over five minutes. And here's a look at just some of the plays that they were able to go with, and a lot of this was Jeter. They had a healthy dose of Jeter on on the drive. Anytime Missouri blitz and there's a pass play, Sheehan just got got the ball out of his hands so quickly, knew exactly where the holes were, and found his wide receivers, and they actually caught the ball. And twice they have had drives of at least 10 plays, and that's resulted in two touchdowns. And the other ones have resulted in a couple of field goals. Taken at the four, Geddes to the 20, to the 25, and brought down across the 30. That was Jasper Simmons on the return there. That, that guy has been in the program only since July. I talked to Coach Barry Odom, the safeties coach, about him, and he loves him. He thinks if, he said if he had 11 of those guys out there on the field, I mean, he's, he's a Witherspoon type guy. He's one of those guys that, that gets everybody motivated and is a quick learner and wants to hit. And now you have to see what kind of adjustments the offense of the Tigers will make here in the second half. 
Gabbard in the first half was 10 of 21, 44 yards. His longest was 13. He'll keep it on the ground. Washington diving forward, close to the first down. I expect to see a healthy dose of Derek Washington. This guy, they run the they run the read with him this time, fake the reverse underneath, and let Derek Washington get up and get up in the hole and get some big yardage. Just shy of that first down, Gabbard to keep it. Will be a hold on the play, and Gabbard will be maybe shy. I believe he will be shy of that first down, but I think we've got a hold coming up. Two flags flying on that play. I think that hold was a, ne was a necessity, though. Holding number 78 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains second down. That's a bit of a sophomore mistake for Blaine Gabbard. His quarterback draw is meant to go one place. If you try to take that outside, you're going to get stopped every single time. It's got to, that's got to go right back up the middle. The bounce right there, he can't. He, it can't happen. You've got to try to get up, get up in the middle, and get what you can. If he doesn't get that hole, it's a seven-yard loss anyway. So it, it was. It was kind of his offensive lineman trying to protect him a little bit. That's Curtis Gregory. Whistled for the infraction under nine minutes to go, third quarter. Gabbard to throw, standing on his 20, steps up and fires a bullet. That's a good example right there where he steps up in the pocket, keeps his feet, and delivers the throw. But you see the coverage. Again, Bowling Green is right there when, when Missouri receivers rece or make a reception. It's, it's very impressive the way that they've been able to blanket the Missouri receivers. So it's third and five here for the Tigers. Trailing 20 to 6. Gabbert trying to zip it in between two defenders. Incomplete going for West Kemp. And Missouri will have to punt it away. That's tough. Again, a ben, again, Blaine Gabbert makes the right read. He just tries to sneak the ball in there. I mean, granted, clearly. It's, I mean, it's a low ball. It could have been caught. It's a, it's a tough catch. You expect you guys to make, make plays for you in a tight game like this. The Tigers now 0 for 10 on third down conversions. Willie Jeter back deep to receive. Standing at his 19. It's a low punt. And it will take Missouri bounce and they'll just down it right there. And all of a sudden, Perot Field has become awfully quiet here in their opening night at home. That's the truth. Missouri's defense has to step up here, make a make a play or get a turnover, do something to, to swing momentum because it's going to be tough. To, it's going to be tough for Bowling Green to, uh, or tough if Bowling Green marches down the field like they did last time. Mizzou fans can catch Big 12 football on Fox Sports Midwest all season long. As we televise 18 games in HD. Weekly preview shows, classics, replays, and more. Also catch this week in Mizzou football Sundays at 10. Big 12 football all season long on Fox Sports Midwest. And don't forget, we've got a pay-per-view next weekend. Mizzou and Furman next Saturday. And we'll be here. And that is 29.95. And Todd, there have been some additions to the football program with this particular building, this stadium. What do you have? Well, that big new scoreboard on the north end of the field, just above the block M there, uh, it's a brand new scoreboard. As a matter of fact, it's making its debut tonight here at Faroe Field. It's about 80 feet tall, 80 feet wide. Uh, the video screen is 50 feet by 80 feet, and I'm told that because it's an HD set, they can get 4.4 trillion shades of color on that scoreboard. It's about three times the size of the scoreboard that used to be there, and that scoreboard's about 12 years old, but it's all part of a, uh, uh, oh, uh, a big uh, improvement plan for scoreboards throughout the University of Missouri. They've got new scoreboards at the baseball field, the track field, somewhere at Missouri Arena. Dactronics put it together. Total cost, $5 million, but the sound system, guys, has been phenomenal as well. Just uh, the clarity of the sound down here on the field from that scoreboard is really something to behold. Yeah, that has changed. Todd, how about the uh, sound from that Mizzou sideline? What's yeah. happening down there? You know, they're trying. I'll tell you, these students are not giving up, but they are stunned. When, when Bowling Green makes a big play, these people down here are stunned. But there's no quit so far in this Tiger student section when it comes to enthusiasm and back in Mizzou. All right, they'll swing it out to the right side, knocking them out of bounds, and a short pickup for 
Bowling Green as the catch was made by Chris Wright. First time we've called his name tonight. Great pursuit by Missouri there. Only give up a yard or two. That's that's a big play. It's a, that's, a, that's considered a stop on a, on a possession. And here's Jasper Simmons with the stop. And a pickup of one. Out of the shotgun again. Sheehan tonight, 17 of 28, 128 yards. And the most important stat, in many ways, on the road, no interceptions. And they're just content to kind of dump the ball and move it methodically as Jeter, a short pickup. And Great was Geddes on the tackle. Great open field tackle. Big third down here. Tigers need to stop. This, again, the battle of field position starts here. So we get to stop here. They're, they got a shot again. Pretty good field position on a punt. All day for Sheehan. Steps up over the middle. And an easy first down as they pick it up. And the catch made by Chris Wright. That time, Missouri only brought four up front, dropped everybody back into coverage. And again, again, he's going to have, if, if you give me that much, that kind of time to throw the ball, I mean, you, you, the D-backs can't cover for that long. There's going to there's gonna be a zone that opens up, and Tyler Sheehan's going to find it. It's a guy that is playing calm. We talk about Sheehan. With the tight end in motion to the top of your screen. Jeter, look at this, Jeter. Close to the first down as the Tigers defense trying to strip it away. That was Simmons trying to strip it. And Jeter off and running again. Got to like the effort out of Jasper Simmons though. Trying to get that ball out of there. He brings up a second down and one. Jeter 15 carries 82 yards and he has one touchdown Willie Jeter all five foot seven of them in the backfield for Bowling Green play action and Chin brought down and a late flag on the play as well very well could be a hold against Bowling Green, and they get a sack. It looked like Sean Weatherspoon was getting held on that play. And Weatherspoon had nine tackles and a sack against Illinois. First team, preseason All-American. Illegal chop off, number 61 of the offense. Penalties 15 yards. Vujicic got whistled for the infraction. Big man up front wears number 61. Kit, there's a chop. We, we, you've got one man engaged. You can't go, you can't go high low on him. That's that's a, that's always an illegal block, and that's a good way to get somebody hurt. It's a ball on the 36, and it drops it to a long second down. Second down and 16. Under six minutes to go in our third quarter of play. Bowling Green now really trying to take some extended possessions here, taking the play clock down. It's under five, right at five now. Again, Missouri rushes four. And Sheehan swings it to the right side. The catch made again by Chris Wright. So here we go, Corby, another big third down. And Missouri will, Missouri will give that up. I mean, they don't want it's, it's second and 16. They don't they don't want anything huge, but they'll I mean they'll give up the, the short underneath stuff. Trying to hear a little noise here back at the zoo again. Sheehan with time again. Rolling to his left. And looks to the sideline and it's incomplete. But again, not much of a pass rush there by Missouri. So give the secondary some credit. Great coverage. Great coverage that time. And he, again, as I said earlier, anytime you force Tyler Sheehan to his left, you're, you're succeeding. Up front, 
they, they've got five guys blocking four. They should they should be successful there. Actually, Willie Jeter should have gotten into that route. He's back he's back there just in case an extra guy comes. If he gets into that route, there may be an opening in the zone. Lavinelli, the senior, will kick it away, standing on his 25. Missouri sets up the return. Fair catch called for, and the catch made near that 10-yard line. And for Missouri, that was Carl Geddes. And so the Tigers need to put something together here. 4.50 to go in our third quarter. From a confidence standpoint, this is a big drive. Granted, if Missouri doesn't come, come away with something on this possession, they, it's, the game's far from over still. But just to gain some confidence for Blaine Gabbard and this offensive football team, Missouri needs to put a drive together. And you have to wonder what's going through the mind of Gary Pinkle after dismantling the fighting Illini a week ago and not being favored in that game and then looking what's happening tonight against Bowling Green. A little short pitch and catch here to Denario Alexander. That's that little slip screen that Jared Perry took for, took for six last week. From the middle, Denario Alexander slips through. And one, he's one tackle away from getting away from that. You're right. This is Washington with a couple of blockers ahead, but they catch up with him. And it's going to be close to the first down. Derek Washington tonight for Missouri. 12 carries, 58 yards. And they're going to say it is a first down. So they'll move the chains. This is also a situation if you're Gary Pinkle, you go into halftime, you say, look, guys, relax. We're down, but still, we're, we're, <laughs> we're playing okay. Not great, but we can get back in this game. It was a one possession football game. You right. Can't, you can't complain about that. Gabbard now will run. Tucks it. And picks up five on the play, and he's knocked out of bounds near the 30. It's Wait. the element that he brings. He can run. And that's a great job by, by Blaine to take advantage of what the, what the defense has given him. You know, he sees the end crash inside, and now he knows he's got field out there. He's got green grass. Take it. Gary Pinkle, his 60th career win came last week against Illinois, and there's the offensive coordinator, Mr. Yost. A little reverse, reverse coming up here. Trying to bounce it to the outside, they will, and it's close to a first down. Good speed to the outside for the Missouri Tigers. That was Jackson. Jarrell Jackson made something out of nothing there. I mean, he could have been stopped for a 10-yard loss on that play, but his speed allowed him to, to get outside and make some, make some people miss and make some plays. That's what Missouri has. Missouri has some athletes on, on the outside that can really dominate this game if they can get involved. Third and one. For Mizzou, came up just short. Let's see if he wants to plunge forward like he did before. He does, second effort, and I believe he got the first down. You pretty much know if he goes under center, that's what he's doing. He's <laughs> gonna take it and go right forward. <laughs> it, it appears that way. <laughs> you don't, we don't see Missouri quarterbacks go under center very often. No. I think they've taken the element of surprise out of that play. <laughs> Just over three minutes to go, third quarter. Gabbard steps up, fires over the middle, and the catch made. Again, Corby, you pointed it out, and rightfully so. When Gabbard has time and steps up in the pocket, and you use the term happy feet, he delivers a strike. Oh, uh, when he when he steps back, and if he gets his feet planted underneath him, steps into a throw, he's accurate, and that ball's coming out fast. Just shy of the first down after the completion to Alexander. No hand it off. That's a first down and then some across midfield. And a first down for the speedster Lawrence. There we go. At least they've got something going now. That was that zone read again. You talked about this as well. Mixing in the pass with the run. Now all of a sudden you stretch the defense, which they did at the end of the first half. You got you got the guard and the tackle that pull, opening up that, opening up that zone. Easy give. Little option play here. He'll shovel it to Lawrence. Brought down, shy of the 40. I like the way 
David Yost is mixing things up on this drive. He's doing a, doing a great job keeping the Bowling Green defense off balance. A little more pressure, I would assume, for Coach Yost this year. Quarterback's coach still, but now the play caller, too. True. He's, he's always had a hand in the play calling. That's though. right. Second and six. Gabbert lost it. Got it back. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's a tough break. And it brings up a third down now. First thing you do as a quarterback, first thing you have to do, I don't care if it's you're under center or back in the shotgun, it's a CQ exchange, it's still the exchange. You have to get that. One thing you can't afford to lose. Great job by Blaine Gabbert getting back on the football, though. Under a minute and a half to go, third quarter. And it's a third down and 10. A hole. This is Washington. Gets the first down and brought down near the 25. Boy, the Tigers needed that one. And they knew exactly what they were running there. That's, that was schematically correct. Coach Yost saw the defensive alignment and knew that they could run that play. They were outnumbered over there. They knew they could run the zone read into the boundary and get something out of it. That's now 14 carries, 78 yards for Derek Washington. He's in the backfield. Gabbert to throw. A little pump fake. Now looking towards the end zone, and it's caught. Oh, goodness. The ball right through the hands of the defender and right into the hands for Missouri and a touchdown for Perry. Great ball. It looked like it went through the DB's hands, but I don't care. That ball was so on target. Wayne Gabbert sat back, saw, knew exactly where he was going with it, and makes a tremendous throw. Jerry Perry, great, or great concentration. Ball going over a defender and still getting to him. A 27-yard touchdown reception for Perry. The extra point, good. And just like that, the Tigers right back in this game. The sophomore. Blaine Gabbert, look at the touch on this pass. A little pump fake, and to the corner it goes. Tigers get the touchdown. That's a pretty ball. 13. <laughs> 11 plays, 87 yards, 3 minutes, 53 seconds on the drive, and a 27-yard touchdown reception for Perry. That, that time, Bowling Green comes with a three-man front, that 30 defense, so they've got three down linemen, three linebackers and then secondary players you give Blaine Gabbert that kind of time he's going to find somebody running jailbreak down the sidelines that was through the hands of the defender Roger Williams we'll call it a touch pass but he yeah, may have missed time to jump just I, a little bit hey I'll take it we'll take it won't yes we? we will so it was a touchdown pass for Blaine Gabbert and the Tigers and their fans now feel like, all right, pressure's off a little bit. Let's get a stop and all of a sudden see what happens. And there's a look at uh, Roger Williams. He's back to receive. The fans, all of a sudden, some excitement inside the stadium. Williams at the four. Spinning, still on his feet, dropped at the 20. Now you see a little fire in the upper Missouri special teams. It's so important to have experience at your quarterback position, and Sheehan's a guy that has been in this kind of spot before, hostile environment, and they still have the lead 20 to 13, but the momentum certainly has shifted back to Missouri. Definitely has. Right now, this is going to be a huge possession. Missouri's one touchdown down within striking distance. Can the defense get a stop on Tyler Sheehan and, and maintain the momentum? He's 20 of 32, 147. Jeter popped. But still keeps his feet. And it was Dominique Hamilton with the hit. Will bowling ball. You see Smith also in there. Just a little toss sweep into the boundary. Jeter gets nailed, but he still continually keeps his feet. It's unbelievable the, the balance that this kid has. Picked up four on the play. Under 30 seconds to go in our third quarter.
Sheehan calmly delivers, but it brings up a third down. And on the tackle for Missouri was Will Ebner. Great job by the Mac backer getting where he's supposed to be in that zone. That does it for the That's third the quarter the third play. Quarter. So here we go. 15 minutes to go in the home opener for the Missouri Tigers. Gabbert delivers a little touch into the corner to Perry, and the Missouri Tigers have cut it to 20 to 13. Fourth quarter coming up. Fans having some fun here at Faroe Field. Now 2013, 15 minutes to go. Our attendance, the official attendance, 65,000. 401 for the home opener for the Missouri Tigers. 70,000 can make, or 65,000 can make a huge difference when you're opposing offense trying to run some plays. And uh, with them back in the game right now, Tyler Sheehan, even with hand signals regardless, that noise is in your ear and you, you, it's, it's hard to focus. What was the toughest place to go in and uh, play for you? I would assume Nebraska? Ohio State, the horseshoe. Really? Loudest place I've ever been. And they've got USC tonight. Ohio State leading in that game 10-7. 2013 in favor of Bowling Green. Missouri non-conference. Here with Gary Pinkle, 11 straight wins. Longest streak in Tiger history. And a big play here, third down and one to start the uh, fourth quarter. Stop here changes complexion of this game. Sure does. If you look at Tyler Sheehan coming out right now, I venture to guess they're going to put, nope, nope, I thought the third and short, I thought they put uh, Freddie Barnes at, at quarterback, but now they're going to they're gonna stay with their usual offense, not the Wildcat. Bowling Green, four for 12 in this spot. The loudest it's been all night. Underneath, they pitch it, and... They'll be close to the first down. I believe they got it. Gutsy call there. Very gutsy call. Uh, they ran a little option fake, and then it was, it was I don't know if it, he was reading that to whether or not he's going to run the option down, down into the boundary, or it was just cl a clear shovel pass. He takes a step down there where he's trying to figure out where he's going to pitch it, and he pitches it inside on the shovel pass. It was, it was a double option. It's an interesting, interesting formation, an interesting play call. He goes inside with it as opposed to going outside with it because Missouri had it strung out to the outside. And they will measure here. And I, I mentioned it's dangerous. It's that shovel pass. You never know inside on a play like that what could happen. Well, yeah, uh, that's a high percentage pass. So if you're going to throw a pass, it's, it's got to be a shovel pass. And the shovel pass is, even though it looks like a lateral, it's a forward lateral. So it's not, it's, it's, if, the only thing that can happen is it can get intercepted. Sure. But, it, but it's never a fumble. And so... They do pick up first down by about a half a foot. And it'll be first and 10 with the ball on the 34. Almost tripped up Jeter across the 35. And a pickup of three on the play. Bowling Green's running the ball effectively, but they can't be running just to uh, just to run the clock at this point because with Missouri's high-powered offense and as potent as those guys are, they can come back out and score in a heartbeat. So it, Bowling Green's got to be running for, for effectiveness right now and not just to move the clock. Well, each of the previous four years, Missouri has won their opener against Illinois and then won the next game, too. It was Ball State a couple of times, Ole Miss and SEMO last year. Ball loose. And Bowling Green has it. It looked like the center snapped the ball before Sheehan was ready for it. It's the, the center, and he it, it appeared the center was the only one moving, too. So, again, it, that's, that's exactly what happened. The center forgot the snap count, got it to Sheehan too early. That's a, that's a costly mistake. 
It has gotten loud here in Columbia. He set up a screen. Jeter to catch. Oh, closing in a hurry. That's a great pursuit. What great a play. Pursuit. Sean Weatherspoon, once again, the guy with the motor, the leader of that defense, makes a huge play. If he doesn't get there, you got Jeter in space, who's been making people miss all night. But Sean read the play, broke on it where he needed to go, and just makes a textbook tackle on Jeter. His 11th tackle tonight, Weatherspoon. Boy, did he close in a hurry. Goodness. Like a bullet. Geddes standing at his 27. Angle it to the right side. Geddes calls for the fair catch yet again. And here come the Tigers back on offense. 12-39 to play. Missouri trailing 20-13. Two-time defending Big 12 North champions. First conference title of any kind. Missouri since 1969. Get back to 2003 and Gary Pinkle really turning around this program. They lead the Big 12 North overall in wins with 50 plus. That's a lot of wins. Yep. Gabbard steps up, delivers. Catch made. Jackson with the catch there's, and a first down for Missouri. There's a spread at its best. There's so many holes out there. You spread the field out like that, you've got five wides. It's it's really it's really simple. Blaine Gabbert knows exactly where that ball is going before he even takes a snap. Hands it off. Washington up the middle to the 45. What I like to see is there's no panic in this Missouri team right now. Blaine Gabbert staying cool, collected, under control, understands exactly what he needs to get done. Second and five. Swing it out to the left side, and it's a drop. I believe it's a drop. Now they're going to say it was a catch by Alexander. He'll be just shy of that first down marker. And we have a hurt Falcon down on the uh, logo of the Missouri Tigers near midfield. And that's Cody Bassler. Nope, check that. Eugene Fells, who is down. Eugene Fells, who is the backup linebacker. And this is a huge play coming up. Todd Donahoe is down there with a special guest. Well, Dan, look who we found on the sideline. It's Ziggy Hood, first-round draft pick of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Steelers are off to a 1-0 start so far. Uh, great start right now, and uh, Tennessee, they you know, very good team. They're going to be a very good team uh, this year. But uh, I think we went out there, you know, showed what the word that we can battle, and, you know, an outcome that we won, and, you know, looked like it was a great start for us. How does it feel to be back at Mizzou here on the sidelines? I mean, it feels great, you know, looking at it from a, you know, fan pers uh, perspective, and, you know, just, they're really enjoying the game, you know, just catching the whole emotion of it. And, folks, do you see what he's holding in his hands? A terrible towel. I mean, he's been waving the terrible towel. After all, he is a Pittsburgh Steeler. And you got a chance to sack Chase Daniel twice in a preseason game. I mean, that's, that's something I wanted to do all four years I was here. And, uh, you know, when I get, uh, did get the opportunity, you know, I, I took it and ran with it. Well, Ziggy, what's your uh, message for this Tiger team tonight? I mean, do what you do that you know, got you there, but if it, if it slows you down, stop doing it and speed it up. Well, if you guys see anybody sneak on with a Missouri set of pads, uh, it might be Ziggy Hood. They could use him out there right now. I wish I had one more game. Uh, he, he wish he had one more game, and there you go. Ziggy, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty. Back to you, Dan. All right. Good job, Todd. And uh, got a couple licks on uh, Chase Daniel, he said, huh? Yeah, but hey, I'll tell you what. Chase showed that he can play the ball, play football at any level this during preseason. It was a tough a roster move that the uh, Redskins had to make right Cra down to the final hour just about. Crazy what roster move. Third down conversions and Mizzou two for 12 tonight. And both of those were on the last drive. So here we go. Third and one. 
He'll hand it off. It's Washington, and he's got the first down for the Great Tigers. Job. Great job by Derek Washington. Keeping his feet moving in the hole. Again, it's that it's that same read. It's a give inside this time. Blaine Gabbert knows his running back's better with the ball than he is, and he'll get it. He'll get him the first down. Washington takes the handoff. The short pickup, maybe of two, as he's closing in on 100 yards tonight. He's uh, right around 90 on 17 carries. So he's been busy, and you know we didn't see him carry the ball that much earlier in the game. We were wondering if they would go to Washington trying to open some things up, and certainly they've done that. Definitely they have. They've they found a way to, to mix it in and keep Bowling Green off balance. Here's Gabbert trying to dump it underneath, and I'm not sure what kind of play they're trying to set up. I'm not sure exactly what that was either, but once again, you see Blaine gets, gets, a, gets a little happy feet in there and, and steps up in the pocket, doesn't set his feet before he throws that and doesn't get his feet turned the right the right direction. At every point, your feet, your feet have to be pointing to your target. And here, Blaine Gabbert, he's, he, his feet are going forward, he's throwing back to the left. That's never going to be successful for you. Third and seven. Gabbert with plenty of time. Now he'll run. Still running, close to the first down, lowers his shoulder, it'll be short. And this is part of the field where Gary Pickle has a decision to make. He's gonna be probably a couple yards short, but you never know, you may go for it here. And they may want to talk about it. It's fourth down and three. Still plenty of time. It's 1044. It's also one of those situations where if you wanted to, you could you know, have a little pooch kick and try to pin Bowling Green back, relying on your defense, then to stop them and get good field position back. Well, you could, definitely. But with the way your offensive line has been dominating the front of Bowling Green this, this half, you got to think about showing confidence in them by going for it right here. It's Majone that's... Down there as they are working on his calf may have been a cramp down there. He's, he was limping off the field. On that last play, you gotta like this, the toughness of Blaine Gabbert, lowering the shoulder on the sideline, trying to pick up the extra couple yards. And they will go for it. Or will we see Gabbert just kick it away? With a pooch kick. Uh, not fourth and one. The fourth down, one to go. Here we go. No hand it off. First down, and then some. Washington still on his feet. Inside the 35 and brought down to the 33. Same play we've been seeing all half. Coach Yost sees something over there into the boundary that he likes. I can't tell what front they've got, but that's where the ball, there's, there's got to be a bubble, there's got to be a hole there somewhere, because he continually gives that ball. 18 carries, 95 yards for Washington. First and 10 on the 33, Gabbard wants to throw to the end zone. Yes, touchdown, West Kemp. Great ball by Blaine Gabbard. Once again, fakes, fakes like he's dashing, takes a couple steps back and finds West Kemp running down the sideline. Again, these wideouts from Missouri can really run. They're going to get behind people, and it's just a matter of whether or not Blaine has, has time to find them. Gabbard, 17 of 30 now, two touchdowns and 144 yards. And this game is brand new. 10 15 to go. Couple of St. Louis kids hooking up. Twenty. Nine plays, 72 yards. It only took two minutes and 24 seconds. 33-yard touchdown catch. West Kemp. Great protection. Great pump fake by Blaine Gabbert. And what the DBs for Bowling Green have been doing all night is they've watched the quarterback. There it is. 
He, they, he's cheating, he's cheating, he's cheating. Pump fake gets him, holds him. West Camp runs right by him. The pump fake, we saw that on the previous touchdown, too. That, that's what that's what's getting him because the, the corners for Bowling Green continually cheat and watch inside and keep their eyes on the quarterback, and that's, that'll kill him. And Farrell is going crazy now. Last two drives, two touchdowns. The previous nine, it was frustration for the Missouri offense. Forty-three plays, just over a hundred yards. The previous nine drives. And everything now going Missouri's way. Great coverage on the kick. Again, momentum has definitely shifted. Sheehan, 23 of 35, 151 yards and one touchdown. There's Weatherspoon, made the terrific play to stop them and turn the ball over. The last possession for the Falcons, and you're going to hear Faro erupt momentarily. Without a doubt. I don't expect Bowling Green to change their game plan much here. Continually do the same thing. There's plenty of time on the clock. Try to get the ball to Jeter a little, a little bit more and then try to try to get some short passes. Sheehan with time, steps up, fires, and that's a first down at the 35. That's at speedster, Ray Hudson, who we saw earlier with a touchdown reception. Missouri's still trying to get some pressure, just not getting enough. They create the pocket, Sheehan just steps up in it, and he just finds his man running jailbreak. Bobble that you saw there in the replay, but then he was able to settle it and pick up the first down in a big play. Ball at the 37. Jeter spinning. And Missouri staying with it after the pickup of maybe three on the play, depending on the mark. That middle is getting congested by Missouri right now. Jeter comes up in the hole in the middle. That's where the hole's supposed to open up. Can't find anything, tries to bounce out. Missouri's all over the place right now. They're flying around on defense. And with Simmons, who we called his name a lot. The stop for Missouri. And a stoppage. Bowling Green, this is their first time out of the second half. And we'll take a timeout as well. Brand new ball game. Last two possessions for the Tigers, resulting in a couple of touchdowns. 9.28 to play, number 25 in the land. The Missouri Tigers, their home opener here tonight. Golden Green 20 and Missouri 20. Missouri Athletics would like to recognize Cypher Strickers. Locations in Mexico, Pekin, Columbia, Kirksville, Tillicanti, Delamar, Roscoe Falls, and Tipton. We'll keep it right here in Todd Donahoe downstairs. What do you have for us? Well, you talk about a momentum change, and I know uh, Corby's been talking about that. That 85-yard drive was huge. Third and 10, the Tigers pick up the first down on the run to uh, Derek Washington, and then the pump fake touchdown to Jared Perry. The offense came off to the field. They were pumped. They were psyched. They finally got something. And then you can't believe the lift that the defense had as well. And, of course, these students feed on that. Then, of course, the next touchdown, the pump fake touchdown to Kemp, and the Tigers have it tied up 2020 but momentum is squarely on their side and they've got a little hop in their step right now on the sideline and in the huddle well missouri has won 18 of the last 20 at home nine straight non-conference games at home and 30 and seven at home since 2003 gary pinkle trying to pick up his seventh home opener win i think coach pinkle's a little more relaxed over there yet not a chance. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> How about this guy, number 12? He's been all over the place. Second and seven.
Brings up third down and seven. See Missouri drop back a little bit more instead of putting so running so many blitzes, so many zone blitzes, getting pressure on Sheehan that way. They're starting to drop some people into coverage and and take up a little more space, so Sheehan doesn't have so many holes. You see the pass defense. Third and seven. Sheehan rolling right. Right down. Alden Smith. Coach Pinkley said Smith. Smith and Coulter are the fastest defensive ends he's had here. And he's had some pretty good ones. Brian Smith, the other guy drafted. Alden Smith is just pure speed off the edge. As soon as Sheehan breaks the pocket, it's over for him. He, he can't get away. You're right. Great speed. Tremendous speed. And now with that sack and a big loss, fourth and 22, they'll have to punt away. Fair catch taken at the 39-yard line. And here comes the Missouri offense again. They're feeling confident right now. Great time for them to get the ball. Terrific field position. Gabbard tonight. Wayne Gabbard, the sophomore, 17 of 30, 144, two touchdowns, and his long was 33. Derek Washington, 18 carries, 95 yards. Leading receiver, Perry, six catches. Alexander was six as well. Gabbard underneath. Short pick out for Missouri. Blaine's got to figure it out now. It's the tight end. Don't call his name very often. Andrew Jones with the catch. It's now six different receivers that have caught the ball. Washington with the hole. To the outside. Across the 50. Still on his feet. And picks up the first down for the surging offense of the Tigers. This total domination by the Missouri offensive line right now. They're just they're doing such a great job up front that it doesn't matter what Bowling Green throws at them. They're still they're blowing people off the ball, whether whether it's a run or a pass, and making sure that Missouri can run their entire offense at this point. First and ten. Swing it to the left side. And a pickup of maybe one on the play as they go back to the tight end. His second catch on this drive and second of the night. What an atmosphere here tonight. Over 65,000 plus. Ready to erupt. Seven and a half to play. Washington with a block. Still on his feet. And close to a first down. This, this Missouri offense is really rolling at this point. It's been a chess match all game between the offensive and defensive coordinators for for the for each team. And right now, look at Derek, Derek Washington. Get upside, get inside, get the hole. They knew what they were running. He knows, I believe Coach Yost knows when it's going to be a give when they run that replay right now just because he knows where the holes are. And that takes him above 100 yards. He's at 113. Lawrence inside the 30. He almost broke that just, open. Just a shoestring right there. Just pick, pick your feet up a little bit, Kevin Lawrence. Lawrence on the day. Five carries, 35 yards. Gabbard, nine carries for 12 yards. And Washington, the leading rusher in this game with over 100. First and 10. Lawrence keeps it. Inside the 25, down to the 23. It's a situation now where Missouri 
just seems to be wearing down Bowling Green. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, and that's exactly what's going on. It's, it's interesting. I mean, like I said, it's, it's a chess match between Shannon Morrison and Mike Elko, the co defense coordinators for Bowling Green. And they had David Yost's number in the first half, but right now it looks like David Yost is Bobby Fisher. Just over six minutes to play. Second down and six. Gabbard to throw. Middle screen set up. And it's Ender. He's got it. To the 10. Five. And brought down. It'll be first and goal for Missouri. That is a big guy to try to bring down his face. Number 81, Denari Alexander. All 6'5", 215 pounds of him. He's been great in past years when he's been healthy. He's had trouble this year. He comes in 100% healthy. Showed it last week, and he's showing it again tonight. The senior out of Marlin, Texas. Her best 10 catches over 132 last weekend against Illinois. First and goal from the two. Who's going to take it? It's Washington. Missouri. Layton. Touchdown. Derek Washington with a two-yard punch. Once again, that's all, that's all up front. Derek Washington was barely touched by the time he got to the goal line. The guys up front did a tremendous job that drive. They've been doing a tremendous job this whole quarter. Extra point good. 5.38 to play. 27-20 Missouri. Eight plays. 61 yards. And it only took 257. Washington, 21 rushes, 115, and also a couple of catches. You got the same replay where you're pulling the guard and tackle, and Washington just walks into the end zone. We've seen that play all night, and it's worked all night. And defensively, you're not sure. Does it go to Lawrence? Does it go to Washington? And it goes to Washington there. Or does it, or does it go to <laughs> Blaine Gabbard himself? Right. He, can, he can always keep it, keep it on his own if he wants to. Good point. Now, if we thought it's been loud on, uh, well, when Missouri's on defense, wait till we hear this next possession now for Bowling Green. This oh, place is going to erupt. It's going to go completely crazy. Tyler Sheehan's going to have his hands full this possession. Rushing a major key in this ball game tonight. As you see, 39 for 180 and averaging nearly five yards a carry. Much of that thanks to Derek Washington. And last week against the Fighting Illini, 37 for 117. But we saw some big, big plays from Gabbert where tonight the running game has really opened up just about everything else. Again, it's it's David Yost is going with what works. He knows what he has to do. He knows what plays he can call. He's starting to understand what Bowling Green is doing up front and what kind of pressure he's getting. So he, he, he has done an outstanding job of making sure that Missouri is in the right place at the right time. Bowling Green has not crossed the 50-yard line since their first score back in the third quarter when they were up by a couple of touchdowns. And since then, all Missouri. But this guy is dangerous back there. That's Roger Williams. With the way Bowling Green's defense is getting shredded, Tyler, Tyler Sheehan has got to be thinking touchdown on this drive and using as much clock as possible. Williams from his three. To the outside, cross the 20, tackled at the 27. If you've enjoyed this one, make sure and uh, join us again next weekend. Missouri battles Furman next Saturday here at Farrell. And thanks to your local cable or video provider, you can once again watch the game on pay-per-view 29.95. Mizzou and Furman next Saturday. You can't be at Farrell. Watch us on pay-per-view. Access your digital program guide or call your pay-per-view provider to order. We've had some fun here tonight, no doubt about that. We have a Missouri player down. And in on that kickoff coverage, it's Tyler Crane. 
who is a linebacker. Nope, check that. That's not Crane. That's Geddes. Well, Derek Washington has been one of the stories tonight. As he now has 21 carries, 114, and a touchdown. Let's hope that young man right there is all right. He's a big part of the defense for Missouri. So Sheehan will have it first and 10 with the ball on the 27. Jeter in the backfield with him. The work from the shotgun. Jeter went one way, had to go back the other, and a pickup of two. Can you see the, the difference in the speed of Missouri's defense right now? Also the they're, pursuit. They're just playing so fast. Yep. It's, I mean, closing speed. Even a quick guy like Jeter has to make a decision and has to move on the ball. And that's Jackie Smith coming off the defensive end. That's not a safety down there. That's the DN coming off to make that play for a one-yard game. And we have five minutes to go. Gets a block. This will bring up a third down, a pickup of maybe four on the play, possibly three. Freddie Barnes has had a nice ball game. Freddie Barnes has had a decent ball game, but he hasn't had that big play that they have that they need him to make. If Bowling Green was going to be successful, everyone knew that, they, that Freddie Barnes was going to have to have one or two big plays. Third. And six. Here he is. Barnes picks up the first down across the 40. Great coverage, great throw and catch, though. Look how calm that Sheehan is in that pocket. Very he's, calm. Oh, he's so calm. But it's easy to be calm when you got a guy like this out there. You know he's you know he's your go-to guy. Again, he's getting he's getting bracketed, he's getting good coverage, but he's still gonna throw to him because he knows Barnes is gonna make a play for him. It's Trey Hobson on the coverage, and you see the distance that they have to go to score. Under four minutes to play. Sheehan gets it back. Fakes the throw, now running and diving out of bounds. How about that play? It's deflected, that's, he gets it back, and then maybe picked up a yard on the play. That's just, that's too much, that's too much effort. Sheehan, I think Sheehan knows that once the ball gets batted back into his hands, he can't throw it again. So that pump fake is just for show. That's right. And it, and it doesn't work at all. Lost a yard. So you're gonna say he lost a yard on the play. Second and 11. Play clock under five. Jeter. Big third down coming up. Clock continues to run. Under three and a half to go. Under three and a half. This this third down isn't as big as you might think it is because they're thinking four down territory right here. This part of the field and with this little time on the clock, they're they've got it. They're going to have to go for it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a run here and just pick up half of it. Bowling Green, 6 of 16. Third down conversions. Fourth down, upcoming, no flags on the play. That was a bad read by Tyler Sheehan. We haven't seen it all day. He knew he didn't have any time, but he had Chris Wright. What, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Chris Wright. He had one of his wideouts running jailbreak down the, across the field and did not see him, completely missed him. Here we go, fourth down and six with the ball on the 45. <laughs> Movement up front, flags on the play. Five to the snap, false start. Number 56 of the offense. Donahue. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. 
That's all that is is the case of Tyler Donahue trying to get a, trying to get a step on the edge, making sure that he doesn't get run by by Brian Coulter. Redshirt Jr. whistled for that, and now because of the penalty, they will punt with fourth down and 11 and 2:48 to play. So a huge penalty. And Bully Green has had three major penalties like that, where I say major, where it's cost them field position and ultimately probably cost them points. points. Correct. I agree with you. Short kick. Get out of the way. Doesn't matter. It's out of bounds. 2.41 to play. Derek Washington time. Without a doubt. Bully Green having two timeouts left with 2.40 left on the clock. Two first downs for Missouri should do it, guys. This has been hard fought to get to this point for Mizzou. Gabbard, give me his numbers. 20 of 33, 172, a couple of touchdowns. Beautifully thrown balls to Perry and Kemp. And he'll work from the shotgun and hands it off. Derek Washington, who's had a big night for the Tigers. It'll take him near 120 yards. That's his 22nd carry. He'll be a sore puppy tomorrow. He will. It's been a while since he's carried 22, tw or 22 times. You know, you think about Mizzou, last few years, Washington more of the, the dual threat, where tonight, you know, this guy is running the Time football, out. and it's almost Holy like green. they're grinding Bring this thing out. We haven't seen that in a while. Exactly, we haven't. They, well, they haven't had to, and that's one thing that you got to appreciate when you look at David Yost, the game that David Yost has called. I mean, he's done exactly what they've had to do to win ball games. If he didn't, he didn't force anything. He didn't get caught up in his own scheme or caught up in, in his own game plan. He's adjusted to what's working and what his team could do and how and how they could find success. Bowling Green with one timeout left and 2:35 to play, 27-20, as Missouri has come back and been able to score in their last couple of possessions to take this lead. Last few sh uh, possessions, I should say. Gary Pinkle actually under 500 in his career against Bowling Green. His days in the MAC and, of course, here at Missouri. Up in, up in Toledo. Here's Gabbard, keeps it himself. And the tackle made as the clock continues to run. And now that timeout is taken. We have an injured Falcon as well in the uh, Missouri backfield. So timeout taken. This is a 30-second timeout. And a 30-second timeout. He was shook up on the play. That was Jones, as we saw him earlier at the exit of the field. And it brings up now a third down and six for Missouri with 2.30 to go. This is a huge third down. This, this third down might be the ball game if Missouri converts here. If they don't, don't get me wrong, there's, <laughs> that defense has been stifling in, in the second half. So I don't think that... I, I definitely don't think that Bowling Green is going to get any gifts here, but this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be interesting to see what happens. How about the poise of Blaine Gabbert tonight, though? Things weren't going right. Still gets back on track. It's great to see. 21 unanswered points for Missouri. It's Washington. And he'll be short. Washington. Clock will run. And this will bring up fourth down and five. Missouri is likely going to let this thing tick down, let all 25 seconds run off the clock. And right just before they take a delay of game, take one of their timeouts just to give Bowling Green as little time as possible to move down the field. You take it about 142 then left to play when they do take this timeout, or if they just take the delay of game as well. They they leave. Yeah, he just took the timeout. Timeout. This will be the first time. So 143 left to go. Had they been on the other side of the 50, they may have taken the, taken the delay sure. just to give the punter more room to, 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 to boot it a little bit. And again, the crowd will become a factor as we saw in that third down play where they had the false start. 
All of a sudden they had third down and 11, or rather fourth down and 11, excuse me, instead of having a chance to convert it after they jumped off sides to Bowling Green. So let's see what happens here. Very well could be left up to the Missouri defense. Wrap this little guy up too. Jeter. Jeter standing on his own 10. Angle it to the sideline. And Jeter is there on the hash. So he'll take it. And they'll mark it at the 16-yard line. First and 10, 136 to play for Bowling Green. Take me inside the defensive huddle. Mr. Witherspoon, what is, what is he saying to his teammates here? I don't know, but I'd be scared of whatever he's saying. <laughs> right right now, right about this time, this guy gets really intense. First and 10, Bowling Green, long at the 16. Sheehan with time to the sideline. And I the catch is made. They don't get out of bounds, I, though. I can tell you what Sheehan's thinking. He's thinking sidelines or first downs. Right there with Chris Wright, what he's he's thinking, okay, I can get this. I can either go out of bounds or I can get the first down. The clock's going to stop either way. So he takes the extra five yards because he knows he's, he's already got the first down, and he only loses two seconds on the clock. And Sheehan steps up with time and now throws it away. That'll stop play with 120 to go. Veteran move by Tyler Sheehan right there. Get the ball out of bounds, stop the clock. And don't take the sack. I want to remind you folks that next week we've got Furman and Missouri pay-per-view here from Perot Field, 29.95. And you can access your digital program guide or call your pay-per-view provider to order. Mizzou and Furman next weekend. We've had a dandy here tonight in the home opener. Sheehan over the middle. Catch made, short of the first down. Weatherspoon in there again. Catch made that time by Adrian Hodges. Now here, here's you got to hurry up. You, you're thinking, she is thinking clock right now. 60 seconds to play. Sheehan with a man almost intercepted. That's one of the first misses that we've seen, or one of the few misses we've seen out of Sheehan all day. He had two guys wide open and missed both of them. This is Hudson, the intended receiver. Wide open, that puts them in great in a great spot. Here goes the ball game. Fourth and three. Sheehan dumps it, incomplete. Are they going to say that's an interception? Yes, they will, and that will be the ball game. That'll do it right there. Great play by Missouri defense. Great, great pressure on Sheehan off the edges. He's. We've seen him. We've seen him do it all night, but once again, it's Jacque, Jacque Smith off the corner getting pressure. Sheehan, ha Sheehan could have made the play, but he just just couldn't couldn't get it done this time. Trey, Trey Hobson, Hobson, great pick. Now they're going to say it's an incomplete pass. So Hobson is saying, "Wait a minute, I'm just trying to pad my stats here a little bit." But he'll take the win, I'm sure. Great effort, great effort. I expect a victory formation, best formation in football here. Wayne Gabbard will close 12, uh, 20 of 33, 172, a couple of the touchdowns. And the Tigers will close out a win. Boy, it was hard fought, too. It was, but that's what you want to see out of your sophomore quarterback. Great job by Blaine Gabbard bouncing back through all the adversity he faced today and getting it done in the end. Gary Pinkle, Weatherspoon, and the Tigers take a knee, and this will do it. The home opener will go to Missouri as they beat Bowling Green. Gabbard in his young career, 2-0.
That's what great teams do. They find a way to win. Great ball game, huh? Bill's character. Sure does. Some anxious moments, no doubt, for this crowd of over 65,000 in the home opener this evening. And the Tigers hold on for the win, 27-20, to 20, and they'll play Furman next week.